Hello everyone. Am I live? Can you see me? Can you hear me? Give me a minute to confirm if I'm clearly visible, audible. If it's working, I will start the session here. If someone can see me live, kindly give me a thumbs up in the chat box. Yes, I hope it's working. Yes, it's working. So, I welcome you all for today's session. Okay. So, I welcome you all for the today's session. This is episode number two of Antimicrobial Drugs. I hope you all have uh, attended my the first session. And uh, in this session, I am going to continue antimicrobial drugs. So, we have seen that based on mechanism of action, we can divide antimicrobial drugs into four categories. So, for explaining this, I have to draw the diagram of a bacteria. This is the cell membrane of a bacteria. This is the cell wall of a bacteria. This is the nucleus of the bacteria having double-stranded DNA or RNA. And this is the ribosome on which protein synthesis takes place. Now, there are four ways to inhibit the growth of this bacteria or to kill this bacteria. Number one, there are some drugs which inhibit cell wall synthesis. There are some drugs which causes pores in the cell membrane. So, some drugs act on cell wall. Some drugs act on cell membrane. There are some drugs which inhibit nucleic acid synthesis, right? And there are some drugs which inhibit protein synthesis. So, in the last session, we have already covered the drugs which inhibit nucleic acid synthesis and uh, inhibit the growth or causes death of the bacterial cell. So, there are <coughs> two types of nucleic acid synthesis inhibitors we have seen in the last lecture, the indirect one and the direct one. In indirect one, we have completed sulfonamides and trimethoprim. In direct one, we have completed quinolones. Now it's time to start protein synthesis inhibitors. So in this session, I will be teaching you the drugs which inhibit protein synthesis inside the bacteria, right? Now we know in the ribosome, there are two units, 30S and 70, um, 30S and 50S, right? So 30S and 50S are the two units. So some of them act on 30S, some of them are act on 50S and some of them act on both. So, I am going to teach you the drugs which inhibit protein synthesis in this session. So, let me start the session. <clears throat> so, the drugs, the antibiotics which inhibit protein synthesis inside the bacteria are all these. So, total 10 drugs are important which inhibit protein synthesis inside the bacteria. The four most important among them are tetracycline, chloramphenicol, aminoglycoside and macrolide antibiotics that is erythromycin. These four are most important ones. These six are also important but relatively less important for the exams. So, you should know the names also. These one also. So, lincosamide, linezolid, streptogramin, streptomycin, mupirocin and fusidic acid. So, these are the 10 antibiotics which work by inhibiting protein synthesis inside the bacteria. So, they all act on ribosome of the bacteria. Either some of them on 50S, some of them on uh, 30S and some of them on both. Shall I start? So, first I will be teaching you the most important one, these four most important ones. Then I will come on the minor one. So, let me start the four most important drugs which inhibit protein synthesis inhibition. So, that is tetracycline, chloramphenicol, aminoglycoside and erythromycin. So, I request you to make a comparative table between them. Okay. So, as I have told you, all of them inhibit protein synthesis inside the bacteria. So, to understand the mechanism of action of each of them, which step? They all inhibit different step. The four different step in the protein synthesis. So, you must be knowing all the steps in protein synthesis. So, before starting the chapter, let me tell you normal protein synthesis in a bacteria. In the bacteria, protein synthesis takes place in the same manner as in humans takes place. So, there are two steps, transcription and translation. Let me draw a cell. You can see here I am drawing a bacterial cell. In the bacterial cell, this is the cell membrane. This is the cell wall. This is the nucleus of the bacteria having double-stranded DNA and this is the ribosome. This is the ribosome having two units, right? This is a normal bacterial cell. How protein synthesis takes place? For protein synthesis to take place, first the two strands of the DNA separate from each other. Unbinding take place. Then leading and lagging. On the leading strand, the corresponding mRNA is formed. The corresponding mRNA. So this step is known as transcription. Transcription. In transcription, the mRNA is formed from DNA. So, DNA, one of the leading strand of the DNA, give rise to corresponding mRNA. So, mRNA, formation of mRNA from DNA is transcription. 
So mRNA is formed in the nucleus. After it is formed in the nucleus, it will come in the cytoplasm of the bacteria and it will go to the ribosome. So mRNA will fit here in the ribosome. There are two windows in ribosome, P window, A window. It will fit in the ribosome and it will be coded into protein. So corresponding uh, protein chain is formed. So every codon codes for one amino acid. Every codon codes for one. In this way, a chain of amino acid is formed. That is protein is formed. So basically mRNA get converted to protein. And this step is known as translation. This step is known as translation. So can I say for protein synthesis, two things are required. Transcription and translation. Can I say this? Kishore, can I say this? In transcription, DNA get converted to mRNA. And in translation, mRNA get converted to protein. Transcription takes place inside the nucleus. Translation takes place in the cytoplasm on the ribosome. Can I say this? Now I am going to teach you four antibiotics. What are my four antibiotics? Tetracycline, chloramphenicol, aminoglycoside and erythromycin. As I have told you, they all will inhibit protein synthesis. So they all will inhibit translation because they all act on the ribosome. They all act on the ribosome, not in the nucleus. So none of them will inhibit transcription. They all will inhibit translation. So I will tell you translation in detail, right? So let me tell you protein synthesis. As I have told you in the protein synthesis, two things happen. First transcription, then translation. I'm talking about the bacteria. So in the bacteria, first DNA, one of the leading strand of DNA give rise to mRNA. So conversion of DNA to mRNA, this is known as transcription. Then this mRNA will come in the cytoplasm from the nucleus and it will fit on the ribosome and mRNA get translated into protein. So conversion of mRNA into protein is known as translation. So ultimately protein is formed on the ribosome as a result of the two things. In this diagram you can see, uh, you can see this is DNA. This is the leading strand of the DNA. Okay, can you see this is DNA, the leading strand of the DNA. So first DNA get converted to mRNA. This red one is the mRNA. So DNA get converted to mRNA, it is known as transcription. Then this mRNA is coming out, going to the ribosome and every codon codes for one amino acid. In this way, it is converted into a chain of amino acid that is protein. So conversion of mRNA to protein, this is known as translation. So a beautiful diagram showing what is transcription, what is translation. I hope you got it. Right. Now I have drawn a beautiful sketch diagram to explain you the complete mechanism. If you can understand the basic steps, then it will be easy for me to, uh, to make you understand what is the mechanism of action of four antibiotics at what step each of them is inhibiting. Can you see a cell of bacteria? Give me a thumbs up. This is a bacterial cell. This is a bacterial cell. Right. Inside the bacterial cell, can you see a nucleus? Yes, you all can see a nucleus inside the cell. Can you see double-stranded DNA inside the nucleus? I have already drawn this diagram previously before the session to save time during the session. If I draw all these, it will take time. So I've already drawn it. Just have a look. So can you see a bacterial cell? It is a bacterial cell inside which you can notice a nucleus, inside which you can notice a double-stranded DNA. Now, during protein synthesis, first, the two strands will separate, the leading and lagging. Can you see one of them is leading? Just suppose this one is leading and this one is lagging. So the leading and lagging strands separate from each other. Give me a thumbs up. Kishore, have you got it? Priyanka, you got it? So the two strands are separating from each other. That is the first step. Now, on leading strand, the corresponding mRNA is formed. Can you see? On leading strand, the corresponding mRNA is formed and this step is known as transcription. So DNA, the leading strand of DNA is transcribed into mRNA. This step is known as transcription. Transcription, right? Transcription takes place inside the nucleus in which DNA, the leading strand of DNA converted into mRNA. Now, now this mRNA will leave the nucleus and come outside. See the next diagram. So this is how transcription is completed. DNA get converted to mRNA. Now this mRNA leave the nucleus and it came outside. After coming outside, it is fitting on the ribosome. It is fitting on the ribosome. On the ribosome, we are having two windows. The P window on which first codon will fit and A window on which second codon will fit. So let me zoom this portion. Shall I zoom this portion? I'm zooming this portion. Everyone have a look. I have zoomed this portion for you. Can you see the zoom version? In this diagram, you can see a ribosome. You can see this is 30th portion of the ribosome. You can see this is 50th portion of the ribosome. You can see two windows are there. P window, A window. P window is the window at which first codon will fit. And A window is the window at which second codon will fit. You know codon. Codon is a triplet of nucleotide. Each codon codes for one of the amino acids. So you can see C1. It is mRNA. Can you see the blue color is the mRNA? The blue color is the complete mRNA. So in the mRNA, codons are present. So first codon is fitting on P window, that is C1. The second codon, the second triplet, codon is a triplet. It is fitting on the A window, that is the second codon. And likewise, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, they all are present ahead, right? Now each codon codes for one amino acid. We know we are having how many codons? Total four, four, four nucleotides we are having. How many nucleotides we are having? 
adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymidine. Now we make three three combinations out of this. The triplets we are making. So if we try all combinations, just for, just suppose AGG, GGC, CCT, TTA, right? Like multiple combinations are possible. So if you see total sixty four combinations are possible. If you if you make all the triplets, triplets means codon. So sixty four combinations are possible. In the sixty four combination, we are having only twenty twenty amino acid. So basically, sixty four codons codes for twenty amino acid. You can see all the sixty four codons here. The all sixty four are written here, and they code for peculiar amino acid. I'm not inter interested currently teaching in biochemistry. You have read all this in biochemistry. Yes or no? Just suppose U U U. Uh, codes for this amino acid, UCU codes for serin, UAU codes for tyrosine. So likewise, the various various codons codes for various amino acid. That is the thing. Now where are the amino acids present? So again, see this is the bacterial cell. Can you see the same bacterial cell? Can you see the nucleus? Can you see inside the nucleus the two strand leading lagging? On the leading mRNA is already formed and this out. And you see the ribosome. On the ribosome, the mRNA is fitted. The P window contains C1. The A window contains C2. We can see where are the amino acids. The twenty amino acids are present in the cytoplasm. Can you see the yellow color are the amino acid? You can see the twenty amino acid are present in the cytoplasm. This is amino acid number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, six, seven. They all are present in the cytoplasm. Ah, uh, total twenty are in number, right? But they are present in cytoplasm on their transporter. The transporter is tRNA. They are not present alone. They all are present on tRNA. tRNA is the transporter of the amino acid. So they all are present in the cytoplasm with their tRNA. Now, when the first codon is at P window, so there is a call for the amino acid. Just suppose first amino acid is AUA, right? So call for AUA. Ki whatever amino acid standing for AUA, please come here from the cytoplasm. So there is an announcement at the P window. P window pe announcement hoga ki whatever whatever amino acid which is holding for this codon, the codon is AUA ya whatever it is, the first codon. So please come here. So wherever it is present, that will go with the help of tRNA. You got my point. So let me tell you the steps of translation and now translation will start. You have to understand the four steps of translation because I am going to teach you four antibiotics now: tetracycline, chloramphenicol, aminoglycoside, and er erythromycin. The four antibiotics inhibit one one step in the translation. In the translation, we are having four steps. One antibiotic inhibit one of the step. So that's why it's important. Now all of them, all the antibiotics. Which I'm going to teach you. They all are protein synthesis inhibitors. In protein synthesis, they all inhibit translation. But exactly which step of translation? You have to understand the steps first. You got my point. So you have to understand the four steps of translation if you want to understand the mechanism of action of the four antibiotics, the protein synthesis inhibitors. See, you can see a ribosome, a beautiful diagram of a ribosome. You can see this is 30s. You can see this is 50s. You can see the mRNA. You can notice the two windows in the ribosome: the P window, the first window, and A window. On the P window, always first codon comes of the mRNA. Can you see blue color is the mRNA? This is the mRNA. mRNA is coming here, and the first codon C1 is present at P window, and the second codon C2 is present at A window. Now at C window also there is a triplet. At P window, at A window also there is a triplet. So the first codon, just suppose it is A, U, G, whatever I don't know. So whatever amino acid presents for this particular codon that will come from the cytoplasm with the help of tRNA and bind at the P window. So first amino acid is coming always at P window, and this step is known as initiation, the first step of translation. Everyone, give me a thumbs up. Kishore, Priyanka, have you got it? What is the first step of translation? The first step of translation is initiation. In initiation, the first amino acid which codes for the first codon that will come. And bind at the P window. At P window, initiation takes place. Everyone, give me a thumbs up. Everyone, please give me a thumbs up. That is initiation, right? You got my point. Now, at A window, whatever amino acid, um, whatever codon is there, so there is a call for the C1. So C1, the first amino acid is coming and binding here. Now there is a call for C2. Whatever is C2, I don't know. It is U A G U A. I don't know. I don't know. Out of the 64, one of the codon is there, right? So there is a call for that particular amino acid. So wherever is that particular amino acid that will come and bind at the A window. So this step, this is step number two in translation. This is step number two. So this is step number two here. This step is known as attachment of new amino acid at the A site, right? So initiation always takes place at P window, the first step, and then the new new amino acid come and bind at the A window. So that is step two. So first step one and step two are over. Everyone, give me a thumbs up. Everyone, give me a thumbs up. Let me show you again step one and step two. Now I'm coming on step three. Listen. I am I am teaching you. Okay, okay. I just forgot. Okay. So this is step two. You can see on step one, 
initiation takes place you can see here so there is a call for the uh, amino acid for the codon present at p window so the amino acid which is holding for that codon which is for their uh, there for that codon that will come and bind at the p window that is initiation is over and after that at a window the new amino acid will come that is uh, a2 will come at this step is known as binding of new amino acyl trna at the a window that is step 2 now this is pre existing one this is new one can i say this yes at p window pre existing one is there and at a window new is there it is a rule it is always like this at p initiation takes place and at a the new one will come so step 1 step 2 is over now it's time to form peptide peptide bond formation between the two so pre existing one and the new one they will form peptide peptide bond formation and pre existing will move to the new new will not move to the pre existing listen my point so can you see the arrow mind the direction of the arrow so what i am saying there is peptide peptide bond step number 3 peptide peptide bond formation between the pre existing and the new and shift of pre existing towards new so that is this shift is known as p2a shift this step is known as p2a because amino acids are shifting from p window to a window because as i have told you always at p there is pre existing p for p p pe pre existing hota hai and a pe hota hai new it is a rule it is a rule so that's why pre existing will go to the new always pre existing one will go towards the new by forming peptide peptide bond formation that's why it is known as p2a shift so step number 3 is known as p2a please understand this terminology step number 3 is known as p2a shift have you been giving a thumbs up this is step number 3 known as p2a shift right now as this is the ultimate summary of p2a shift once it is shifted here forming peptide peptide bond formation it will look like this now it is already pre existing pre existing one is already shifted towards the new one so p window is empty can you see the p window is empty now p window is vacant now it is empty now and on a window both are present this is the a1 this is the a2 so a1 is pre existing one a2 is new one so this is the summary of step 3 now it's time to do last step step 4 now it's time to do so since p window is empty right what will happen now this step is difficult listen the complete ribosome will move by one codon ye ek codon aage badh jayega the complete ribosome the windows are uh, the windows along with the ribosome is moving but mrna is not moving mrna wahi ka wahi rahega the blue color mrna is there only it is still the mrna is still it will not move but the ribosome will move so what will happen you can imagine the p window will move by one codon so its p window will come at c2 the a will come at c3 you got my point so this is the summary you can see the p is coming at the c2 and a is coming at the c3 you got my point you got my currently dekho p and t hai aur a is filled lekin when the ribosome will move by one codon ribosome will move forward by one codon sirf ek codon aage badhega sirf ek codon aage badhega so this a1 a2 will come on the p and a will become empty can you see now this a is empty a1 a2 is on p right so this step is known as translocation can i say this step is translocation in translocation the ribosome is moving ahead by one codon by one codon give me a thumbs up priyanka amar kishor give me a thumbs up those who are watching watching me live everyone give me a thumbs up have you got it so this is the movement of ribosome ahead by one codon so can can you see in the previous one p window is empty and the amino acid is present on a window but when translocation take place this a1 a2 is coming on the p window so can i say this is a2 p shift so step number 4 is a2 p shift can i say this this is known as a2 p shift this is known as a2 p shift so what are the four steps can someone summarize me so what are the four steps can someone summarize me so i will start the antibiotics now so what are the four steps of translation the first step is always initiation initiation takes place at window p that is the first a1 will come at p window then the second step is coming of new amino acyl trna at a window so step number 2 takes place at a window that is a2 will come at the a window a1 is the first codon so first amino acid will come always at p window and a2 is the new one that will come at the a so this is pre existing this is new step number 3 is peptide peptide bond formation between the two and shift from p to a so shift from pre existing to new so p will become empty and last step is translocation in translocation the complete ribosome will move ahead by one codon so that amino acid always move from a to p so see the four steps so step number 1 at p window step number 2 at a window step number 3 is p to a shift and step number 4 is a to p shift do you have any doubt in that kishore amar priyanka others those who are watching me live do you have any doubt in the four steps if you don't have any doubt now see the mechanism of action of the four antibiotics see 
they are going to teach you so tetracycline is t chloram phenicol is c amino glycoside is a and erythromycin is e right so the four steps amino glycoside inhibit the first step that is initiation that is a tax on p window it inhibit p window right the second step is inhibited by tetracycline tetracycline inhibits step number 2 that is attack on a window and it inhibit a window coming of new amino acid at the a window right the third chloram phenicol inhibit p to a shift that is step number 3 and erythromycin inhibit a to p shift that is step number 4 this is the summary i will show you all four don't worry give me a thumbs up right shall i proceed ahead so see this is the step number 1 this is initiation at initiation the amino acid chain is present at p window and see amino glycoside is inhibiting initiation so amino glycosides are the antibiotic which inhibit p window p window ko inhibit karenge so there is no initiation right see after initiation it is the pre existing one it is the new one now it's time to form peptide peptide bond formation between the pre existing and new and shift of pre existing uh, shift of pre existing to new now before that the new amino acid will come at the a So tetracycline is inhibiting the step number two. That is, it is inhibiting uh, the A window. So amino glycoside inhibit P window. Tetracycline inhibits A window. The formation of peptide peptide bond form and shiftage of pre-existing to new. That is P to A shift. P to A shift is inhibited by chloram phenicol. It is inhibited by chloram phenicol. And the last one after shifting, the complete ribosome is moving by one codon. That is A to P shift. That is inhibited by erythromycin. So that is the mechanism of action of the four antibiotics. This is the diagram given in the books. Now I guess you all can understand which is which antibiotic. In this diagram, can you see the numbering one two three four? Can you tell me what is one two one two three four? So Amar, Priyanka, Kishu, can you tell me what is one? What is antibiotic number one? Can you see antibiotic number one here? This one is one. See one. Where is the cross? This is an antibiotic which is inhibiting P window. So that is an antibiotic that is inhibiting P window. That is initiation. So this is amino glycoside. One is amino glycoside. Can you see antibiotic number two? What is two? Can you see what is two is doing here? Two is inhibiting A window. That is step two. Step two. That is it is inhibiting the coming of new amino acid RNA at the tRNA at A window. That's why this is tetracycline, right? Can you see number three? Antibiotic number three. What it is doing? See where is the cross? Where is the cross? It is inhibiting P to A shift. The arrow P to A shift. The P to A shift, right? So P to A shift is inhibited by chloram phenicol. It is inhibiting P to A shift. And the last one, the fourth one, can you see where is the cross? What it is inhibiting? So see the arrow. It is inhibiting A to P shift. So the last one is erythromycin. So the summary is that amino glycoside, tetracycline, chloram phenicol, and erythromycin. So they inhibit the four step. It inhibits step number one. It inhibits step number two. It inhibits step number three. It inhibits step number four. Step number one is inhibited by inhibiting. Uh, step number one is inhibited. By inhibiting A window, ah, uh, by inhibiting P window. So amino glycoside inhibit P window because step number one is the initiation. Initiation takes place at P window, right? Tetracycline inhibit A window. So step number two is inhibited. That is coming of new amino acid tRNA at A window. This step is inhibited. Chloram phenicol inhibit P to A shift. P to A shift is inhibited by chloram phenicol. That is step number three. That is shifting of pre-existing one to new one. Pre-existing one to new one. After formation of peptide, peptide bond formation. So it is inhibited by chloram phenicol. And erythromycin inhibit A to P shift. That is, it inhibit the last step translocation. So you can imagine question can come on any point. Question can come on any point. You can see. So amino glycoside inhibiting step one, inhibiting P window, inhibiting initiation. Any question can come. Tetracycline inhibit step number two, inhibit A window, inhibit coming of new amino acid at the A window. Right. Chloram phenicol inhibit step number three, inhibit P to A shift. P to A. That is peptide peptide bond formation between the pre-existing one and the new one and shiftage of pre-existing to new. This is inhibited by chloram phenicol. And erythromycin inhibiting step number four. That is A to P shift. That is translocation of the complete ribosome by one codon ahead. So anything can come in your exam, but you are prepared for everything. Give me a thumbs up. You can learn step one, two, three, four. Everyone knows. So you can learn a mnemonic A T C E. A T C E. Amino glycoside, tetracycline, chloram phenicol, erythromycin. In this sequence, they are inhibiting the four steps. A, T, e, C, E. Can you see A, T, C, E? Amino glycoside inhibiting step one, right? Tetracycline inhibiting step two. Chloram phenicol inhibiting step three. And erythromycin inhibiting step four. Everyone, give me a thumbs up. Shall I start the chapter? I will be teaching you in this sequence. So everyone, all the students who are watching me live or whether they will watch recorded, I request them to make this competitive table. 
comparative table between the four antibiotics now you got the mechanism of action of all four wo humne ek hi baar mein kar liya now let me tell you rest of the things right so please make this comparative table first i will teach you tetracycline the first chapter then i will teach you complete chloram phenicol then i will teach you amino glycoside and in the end i will teach you erythromycin the headings are same you have to write introduction mein write the structure classification very important spectrum specific spectrum which bacteria are killed mechanism of action i already taught you but we will revise individual which step is inhibited right resistance the way of the resistance i will tell you adverse effect mnemonic uses mnemonic at the end of the session you are having eight mnemonic two to each category so each category i will give you two to mnemonic one for adverse effect one for uses so the things will become super duper simple for you shall i continue shall i start the first chapter let me start the first chapter tetracycline start filling this table right now amar priyanka Kishore, take your notebooks out, take your pen out, and start filling. It will take. It will not take any extra time. So while I am speaking, while I am explaining, at the same time you can pull your fill your tables with me. And at the end of the lecture, when I finish, your table is also completed. So you don't have to give any extra time. While watching the lecture only, you can finish your studies. Don't give extra time. Right. Start the first chapter. Tetracycline. In the introduction, write down why tetracycline is known as tetracycline. What is the structure? Draw the structure here. tetracycline you can see it is known as tetra tetra means four it is having four rings four benzene rings that's why it is known as tetracycline it is having a four one two three four four benzene rings are present in the structure that's why known as tetracycline right and it is obtained from actinomycetes it is also important it is not obtained from bacteria it is not obtained from fungus it is obtained from actinomycetes right now that's it in the structure so in the structure i will also fill this table with you by the way can you see i have drawn the tetracycline structure here right and i have written here please write down it is obtained from actinomycetes it is obtained from actinomycetes that's what important in the introduction after introduction let me come on the classification in the classification let me classify tetracycline into three categories group 1 group 2 group 3 we classify tetracycline into three categories group 1 2 3 in group 1 we are having okay listen tetracycline is a category inside which seven drugs are there total seven drugs are there tetracycline is one of them so tetracycline category mein tetracycline drug hai right group 1 includes tetracycline chlor tetracycline oxy tetracycline so it is tetracycline chlor tetracycline and oxy tetracycline they are the derivatives of tetracycline so group 1 is over in group 2 we have demaclocycline and lemicycline dl demaclo and lemi in group 3 we have doxycycline and minocycline so there are two d dl and dm dl is group 2 dm is group 3 but this is demaclo this is doxy so i would like to write with you group 1 group 2 group 3 tell me the name of the three drugs in group 1 tetracycline chlor tetracycline oxy tetracycline very easy right group 2 is dl group 3 is dm can you tell me the full form in group 2 it is demaclo demaclocycline and lemicycline in group 3 it is doxycycline and minocycline so now the full form demaclo with lemi doxy with mino So total three plus two plus two three four five six seven seven antibiotics are there in this category. They all are tetracycline. They all are tetracycline. The the classification of the tetracycline. Tetracycline is a drug inside the category tetracycline. So tetracycline is not one drug. Tetracycline means seven drugs together. I am talking about all seven. So I am talking about every one. If I am teaching you the chapter, give me a thumbs up. So that is the classification. So see here I have written category one two three. I expect you to fill it. So write the category one. What is it? Write the category one. Write tetracycline, oxy tetracycline, chlor tetracycline. Category two. Write DL. And category three. Write DM. DL is demaclo and lemi. Demaclocycline, lemicycline. And category three. It is doxycycline and minocycline. So please write the full form. Right. Coming on spectrum. I will fill this table with you. Coming on spectrum. Are you people with me? Can I start the spectrum? Mind. Mind it. Again, it is broad spectrum. So in broad spectrum. I consider gram positive cocci, gram negative cocci, gram positive bacilli, gram negative bacilli. Not only this, all the spirochetes, all the rickettsia. Not only this, all the what do you call it? All the spirochetes, all the rickettsia, all the mycoplasma and protozoa also. So that is the uh, spectrum. So write down GPC, gram positive cocci, gram negative cocci, gram positive bacilli. Gram negative bacilli. It kills everyone. Tetracycline kills everyone. Not only this, it includes it, it it kills rickettsia also. 
it kills pyrochetes also it kills mycoplasma also and it kills apart from these are all bacteria it kills some parasites also protozoa so that is the broad spectrum antibiotic so write down don't write the name of the bacteria it will be too much if you write the name of bacteria the list is long all the bacteria will come so write down the spectrum like this gram positive cocci gram negative cocci gram positive bacilli gram negative bacilli pyrochetes rutichia mycoplasma protozoa everything coming on mechanism of action who will tell me mechanism of action Amar, would you like to tell me mechanism of action? Which step it is inhibiting? You will say, you all will say, ma'am, they inhibit protein synthesis. But at your level, I am expecting the details. I know these all are protein synthesis inhibitor. Inhibit protein synthesis is the mechanism of action of all of them. But tell me the detail. Which step? So my first question: Protein synthesis takes place in two step transcription translation. So they all inhibit transcription to translation. They all inhibit translation. Translation takes place on ribosome. So all these drugs act on ribosome and they all inhibit translation. Translation have four steps. So tetracycline inhibit which step? Very good, Kishore. Very good. Amar, no, not initiation. You got confused. Initiation is inhibited by this one. Aminoglycoside inhibit the first step initiation. No, no, you got confused. Tetracycline inhibit step number two. Kishore is right. So tetracycline inhibit step number two. That is at A window. A window. A window coming off new am am uh, amino acid tRNA at A window. So this step is inhibited, right? So mechanism of action, first of all, say it inhibits protein. First of all, it inhibits protein. It do not act on cell wall. It do not act on cell membrane. It do not act on nucleus, nucleic acid synthesis. It inhibits protein synthesis. That is, it acts on ribosome. It inhibits the translation in the protein. You can see the fourth step. This one is tetracycline. This one is tetracycline. I have already explained you this mechanism. The four steps, the four mechanism. Right. This one is aminoglycoside. This one is tetracycline. The three. This one is chloramphenicol, and the fourth one is erythromycin. You can see the first aminoglycoside inhibit P window. That's why inhibit the first step initiation. You can see currently my chapter is tetracycline. You you can see this inhibit A window. That's why inhibiting the second step that is coming of new amino acid tRNA at the A window. A window pe hamisha new aata hai. So new nahi aata hai ga. Pre existing one is present, but new cannot come. Since new new cannot come, protein chain cannot form. Right, that the third one, chloramphenicol, inhibit the peptide peptide bond formation between the pre-existing and new and shift of P2A. So P2A nahi hoga, chloramphenicol mein. And the last one is the erythromycin. Right, erythromycin inhibit A to P shift, that is the last step translocation of the ribosome by one proton. So currently my chapter, I am teaching you tetracycline. So tell me mechanism of action of tetracycline. What does it do? It inhibits protein synthesis with step. So describe this one, this one. That is step number two. You can see this is tetracycline. I have written T for tetracycline. See the arrow. It is inhibiting A window. So new amino acid cannot come on the A window. Pre-existing chain is present. But since new cannot come, the chain cannot grow. So it is the termination of the chain. So attachment of new amino acid at the A window cannot happen because tetracycline inhibit A window. A window is damaged. Ho it damaged A window. There is no A window. Since there is no A window, new amino acid cannot come. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up. You got my point. Yeah, but don't be sorry. Just to uh, make you understand. That's why I have pointed. Don't, don't take it otherwise. Right? So just you. It fits in your permanent memory. Whatever mistakes you want to do now. Do it here. It is not the final exam. It is the learning session. If, you, if you're doing mistakes here. I'm really happy you are doing mistakes here. It will fit in your memory. And you will not repeat the mistakes in the exam. Right? So kindly don't take it otherwise. So don't say sorry to me. Anyways. So this is the mechanism of action of tetracycline. So tetracycline enter inside the bacteria. Yeah. One more question I would like to ask. Tell me, this is tetracycline, no? Number two, one. This one is tetracycline. I taught you. So in ribosome, two, two portions are there. This is 30S, this is 50S. Tetracycline act on which portion? 30 ki 50. So tetracycline will go to the ribosome and acts on 30S. On the 30S, it will damage A window. It will degrade A window. So there is no A window now. Since A window is not there, so the new amino acid cannot come and bind at the A window because it is already damaged by the tetracycline. So pre-existing one is present. But new cannot come. So peptide chain cannot grow. It cannot grow further and it is bacteriostatic. It is bacteriostatic. Now listen my point. This is the bacteria. You all can see a bacteria inside. How bacteria is synthesizing protein you can see. Uh, so just suppose this bacteria is present in the patient's body. I am a doctor. There is a patient in my clinic. The patient is saying, doctor, I am having this, this, this complaint. So I assume this, this patient is having some of the bacterial infection. For the treatment, I want to give tetracycline as treatment. So this is the tetracycline tablet, one of the, there are seven tetracycline. So just suppose he's having pimples or no, some skin infection. So I will give doxycycline. Doxycycline is given for the skin infections very frequently or minocycline. 
right? He is having some other infection, and I want to give one of the tetracycline. There are seven tetracycline. One of the tetracycline is a treatment of that particular infection. So I ask the patient to take the tablet. So patient will take the tablet. The tablet will go inside. It will be absorbed in the blood. The tetracycline will reach in the blood. From the blood, the tetracycline is going in the bacteria. See, the tetracycline is entering inside the bacteria. This is one of the tetracycline, not only tetracycline. It can be doxy, it can be mino, it can be demeclo, it can be limey. It is any of the seven. So it is entering inside the bacterial cell. After that, it is going on the 30th ribosome of the bacteria. After that, it degrades the A window of the bacteria so that peptide chain fail to grow and this bacteria cannot synthesize protein. Now, this bacteria cannot synthesize protein, but this bacteria is not killed because pre-existing protein are present. It is not degrading the pre-existing protein. Tetracycline inhibits the synthesis of new protein, but this bacteria already have protein. New one is cannot be synthesized, but the pre-existing have also have now. So, bacteria is not killed. So, tetracycline is not bacteriocidal. It is bacteriostatic. Have you got the meaning now? It is bacteriostatic. This bacteria cannot divide because we know whenever bacteria try to divide, whenever bacteria try to form two daughter cells out of the one cell, it wants to do the binary fission. It wants to do the cell division. Protein synthesis have to be doubled. But here, this bacteria cannot synthesize new protein, so it cannot divide. So, tetracyclines are not bacteriocidal. They are bacteriostatic. See, they are bacteriostatic. You got the meaning? You got the meaning? They are bacteriostatic, not bacteriocidal. Give me a thumbs up. Have you got it? Have you got it? See, I have written the mechanism of action in short here. Everyone see what points I have written here in my table. So, first of all, you have to tell me tetracycline act on 30s, 50s, both. So, my answer is 30s. Chloramphenicol will act on 50s. Amino glycoside will act on both 30 plus 50s. And erythromycin X on 50s. So, do the comparison. I will do the comparison later on when I will teach you all. Right. So, in this way, you have to do the comparison. Which is acting on 30, which is acting on 50, which is acting on both. Right. So, tetracycline X on 30s, sabse pahli baar. Right. It inhibits A window. That is step number 2. This one is inhibiting step number 2. This one is inhibiting step number 3. This one is inhibiting step number 1. And this one is inhibiting step number 4. You know the steps. Window-wise, this one is inhibiting... Window A, right? That is step number two, coming of new amino acid tRNA. This one is inhibiting window uh, P, that is initiation. This inhibit P to A shift, chloramphenicol, and erythromycin inhibit A to P shift, if I am not wrong. Yes, you got my point. So, the third point I have written here, it is bacteriostatic. All of them are bacteriostatic except amino glycoside, which are static as well as thriller. So, in this way, we will do a comparison. Comparison is important. If I teach you four chapters individually, it is good for nothing. It is good for nothing. If I am teaching you four chapters in a comparative manner, that only matters. Right? So, it will fit in your permanent memory and you can compare the four. Give me a thumbs up. So, what is the mechanism of action? Who will tell me in short? First, tell me. First, tell me 30 years or 50 years or both. So, answer is 30 years. Then, tell me the number of the step or the window. So, the window is A window and second step is inhibited. That is coming of new amino acid tRNA at the A window. Then tell me whether it is bacteriocidal or static or both. So answer is static. So 30S, bacteriostatic, window A. This is my answer. Give me a thumbs up. I am done. Give me a thumbs up. So coming on the resistance. The next heading is resistance. Shall I start resistance? Are you people with me? What is resistance? What do you mean by the term resistance? Right? What do you mean by the term resistance? Can you see this is a bacteria? This is the cell of bacteria. This is not human cell. This is a bacterial cell present in my patient's body. I am a doctor. I want to kill this bacteria because I want to treat my patient. I want to treat my patient for treating my patient. Either I want to kill this bacteria or I want to stop the growth of this bacteria. That is resistance. That's why I am giving for the treatment tetracycline, one of the antibiotic. Yes or no? So tetracycline will enter inside the bacteria and do its mechanism of action. So this bacteria cannot divide, but bacteria is not liking it. Bacteria is saying, no, I want to divide. I want to grow. I want to live. I do not want to die. I do not want to remain as it is. I want to do the binary fission. Bacteria. So, bacteria will oppose the action. And that opposition is known as resistance. So, first understand the meaning of resistance. Resistance is what is Bacteria will oppose this action. Mechanism of action is what tetracycline is doing on the bacteria. Resistance is what bacteria is doing on the tetracycline. You got my point. Mechanism of action of the drug is what drug is doing on the bacteria. But resistance is what bacteria is doing on the drug. Bacteria do not want to, no one wants to die. So bacteria is also a creature. Bacteria also do not want to die. Bacteria also want to divide. So bacteria will oppose the action of tetracycline by three mechanisms. They are very interesting. See, bacteria are very smart. You know, so as soon as you are giving the tetracycline, 
the tetracycline tablet patient is taking. Tetracycline is absorbed and go in the blood. From the blood, tetracycline is trying to enter the bacteria, right? So, bacteria can do two things here. Number one, bacteria, so for the entry inside the bacteria, there are few transporters are required. On the surface of the bacteria, few transporters are there, which help in the entry of tetracycline inside the bacteria. And this is known as influx, influx of tetracycline. So, bacteria are very smart. Bacteria do not want tetracycline to come in. So, bacteria will change the transporters or inhibit the transporters so that influx can be reduced. So, bacteria are reducing the influx. Now, hoga bans, na bajegi bans ho ye. Tetracycline ko andar hi nia ne dege. So, kitna hai tetracycline de do, ho to andar jai nira bacteria ke. So, how does the bacteria will be killed? Or how the growth will be stopped? You got my point. So, bacteria decrease influx by changing transporters on the surface. You got my point. Or, or, if the influx is taking place, as soon as tetracycline enters inside, before tetracycline go to the ribosome and show its action, before that, before that, bacteria have a vacuum cleaner. The name of the vacuum cleaner is another transporter that as soon as trans tetracycline is coming out, it is thrown out again. Like vacuum cleaning, it is thrown out. As soon as it is coming out, it is thrown out. This is known as efflux. This is known as efflux. So, bacteria are either reducing influx or increasing efflux. That is the first mechanism. By this mechanism, tetracycline decreases the entry of tetracycline inside the, inside the bacterial cell. Either they are reducing influx or they are increasing efflux. The first mechanism, decrease influx or increase efflux. The first mechanism, bacteria are not liking tetracycline. That's why inhibiting its, uh, limiting its entry. Give me a thumbs up. By decreasing influx or increasing efflux. That is the first mechanism. Everyone give me a thumbs up. And uh, the second mechanism, just suppose somehow the tetracycline entered. Uh, influx and efflux mechanism is not working and tetracycline entered inside the cell. Now what the bacteria will do? Tetracycline is already inside the cell. Bacteria will cover the ribosome with a protective covering. A cover Bacteria will cover the ribosome with a protective covering so that tetracycline cannot reach on the ribosome. So the site of action of tetracycline is a window on the ribosome. If tetracycline cannot reach the ribosome, how tetracycline will show its action? So tetracycline will remain in the cytoplasm but cannot show the action. So bacteria is safe. So the second mechanism is formation of ribosomal protective covering with the help of protective proteins. This can also happen. Bacteria are very smart. Number third mechanism, the last mechanism. This mechanism, the first one is not working. Influx, efflux kharab ho gaya, all the tetracycline is already inside. The protective covering cannot be formed. No, that bacteria got afraid. No, I will, I, will, I will be killed. My growth will be stopped because I don't have covering and tetracycline is already in. Now something else should be done, right? So the third mechanism, the third mechanism, bacteria will form an enzyme. Bacteria will form an enzyme inside that. The name of the enzyme is tetracycline maze. Is tetracycline maze. That enzyme will degrade the tetracycline. You know, so what as soon as tetracycline is entering in the bacterial cell, before tetracycline go and degrade a window, before that enzyme is already ready. shoot So as soon as tetracycline is entering, the enzyme is degrading tetracycline. Before tetracycline shows its action, enzyme is degrading it. So that is known as enzyme formation. The name of the enzyme is tetracycline inactivating enzyme. The name of the enzyme is tetracylinase enzyme. Just like penicillinase. Hota hai. Give me a thumbs up if you got it. So what are the three mechanisms of resistance? Tell me. Number one, decrease influx and increase efflux. Number two, protective covering around the ribosome. And number three, tetracycline degrading enzyme. Everyone give me a thumbs up. Everyone. Everyone. So, uh, Amar, have you got it? Uh, Subhastva, have you got it? Kishore, Priyanka. Shall I proceed at? These are the three ways of resistance. So I have marked three arrows here. You write down the three mechanisms. Write down first. It is decrease influx and increase efflux. Write down the second protective covering around the ribosome. Write down the third. It is enzyme formation which degrade the tetracycline. Tetracycline maze enzyme. Coming on the adverse effect and uses. I am having two mnemonics for you. One for adverse effect, one for uses. Shall I give you adverse effect mnemonic? Shall I give you adverse effect mnemonic of the tetracycline? This is the mnemonic. LK Advani PT teacher. LK Advani, Advani ko Advi bolo. You will get confused. LK Advi PT teacher. LK Advi PT teacher. L stands for liver damage. Tetracycline cause liver damage. A, kidney damage. Tetracycline also cause kidney damage. A, anti-anabolic effect. I will explain you what is anti-anabolic effect. D, diabetes insipidus. Tetracycline cause diabetes insipidus, not mellitus. V, vestibular damage. You know, in the inner ear, there is a balancing organ, the semicircular canals. So, balancing organ, that is vestibular toxicity. Right? So, patient feel vertigo. Right? Imbalancing. I is increased intracranial pressure. Intracranial pressure in the brain, the CSF pressure. So, that is increased. Right? 
P is phototoxicity. Photo, it is skin reaction, sunburn reaction. T is teeth and bone. It forms chinets in the teeth and bone. So teeth color discoloration will occur. One more T. Add here. I forgot to write. Teratogenic. Teratogenic. So say the full form first. Say the full form. L K. I will give you the details. L K Adv. L K Adv. P T teacher. L K Adv P T teacher. Who will tell me the full form? So L for liver damage. A for kidney damage. A for anti-anabolic actions. B for diabetes insipidus, minded not mellitus, right? Insipidus. V for vestibular damage in the inner ear causing imbalancing. E is intracranial pressure in the brain and the spinal cord due to CSF pressure is increased. P is phototoxicity. One T is teeth, teeth and bone chelation. And one more T is teratogenic. First, everyone give me a thumbs up on this mnemonic. If you like the mnemonic, give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up, then I will give you the details of each point, right? There is one more mnemonic. Don't me say ek yaad karna. Don't. Try to learn both. If you like LK Adv PT teacher, it's good enough. If you don't like it, go with couple they bat. So again the same full form. K for kidney damage, A for anti-anabolic, T for phototoxicity, I for intracranial pressure, L for liver damage, D for diabetes insipidus, V for vestibular, and bat 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 bone and teeth. You can see whatever you like. The full form is same. More or less the full form is same. Either say Kapil Dev Bat or say I like LK Adv PT teacher. Whatever you like, it's your choice, right? But try to learn one. Don't try to jump in both, right? You will get confused. Anyways, we will give the details now. Start with liver damage. Liver damage will happen. What will happen in the liver damage? Patient will have joined this. Patient will have fatty infiltration, but this is reversible. Once you stop the drug, it will reverse, right? It is reversible. Second is kidney damage. All tetracycline. There are seven tetracycline. You know the name. Class one, class two, class three. I guess you know the seven names. All of them causes kidney damage. All of them causes Fanconi syndrome in the kidney. But only doxycycline is safe. It is safe. It do not cause kidney damage. So if some patient is coming to my clinic, he is already having renal failure. The patient is already having renal failure. He is a known case of renal failure. Shall I give any of the tetracycline to this patient? No. Tetracyclines are contraindicated in this patient because renal failure is already there. And if you give the tetracycline, it will cause more kidney damage. So that will be exaggerated. Only one is safe in that in this patient that is doxy. Doxy I can give, but other demeclo, um, minocycline, oxy tetra, clo tetra, I cannot give anyone else. Give me a thumbs up. So doxy is safe in renal failure. Please highlight it, mind it, and learn it. Doxycycline, right? So doxycycline can be used in renal failure. It is safe. It is safe. But all other remaining six, you know the name of the remaining six, I guess. They all cause renal failure. They are not safe in renal failure. The third is anti-anabolic. Okay, what is the function? What is the function of tetracycline? By function, I mean what is the mechanism of action of tetracycline? You tell me now, what is the mechanism of action of tetracycline? You will say, ma'am, it inhibits protein synthesis in what? In whom? It inhibits protein synthesis in bacteria. But does it inhibit protein synthesis in human also? Yes. Answer is yes to a little bit extent. That is the side effect. In humans also. Just suppose I am the patient. I, in, in my body, some of the bacterial infection is present. You are a doctor. I came to you, doctor, and I'm having this, this, this complaint. You say, ma'am, you take tetracycline. It's okay. You will be all right. Take a course, right? So I'm taking the tablet of one of the tetracycline you have prescribed to me. I'm the patient. So if I'm taking the tetracycline, that get absorbed. That will go in my blood. Now in my blood, two types of cells are there. One is bacterial cell. One is human cell. So tetracycline will enter in both the cell. In the bacterial cell also, it will inhibit protein synthesis by acting on the ribosome of the bacteria. In human cell also, it will inhibit protein synthesis by acting on the ribosome of the human. But this one is a little extent. Not much. I want this action to take place, but I do not want this action to take place because this is a side effect. So I will have certain side effects, right? So it inhibits protein synthesis in humans also. And inhibition of protein is anabolic or anti-anabolic. You, you know the basics. Now what is anabolism? Anabolism is synthesis of protein. Protein synthesis ko kate hai anabolism. And inhibit protein synthesis is anti-anabolism. So can I say tetracyclines are anti-anabolic? Now you got it. Yes. So tetracyclines are anti-anabolic. Bol sakte hai aisa? Yes, bilkul bol sakte hai. So tetracyclines are anti-anabolic. They inhibit protein synthesis overall in humans also. So they cause negative nitrogen balance and increases blood urea because of negative protein synthesis, right? So that can be said to a little bit extent. That is anti-anabolic effect. The next side effect, yes, absolutely right, Pramina, yes. So the next side effect is diabetes insipidus. What is diabetes insipidus? It is not diabetes mellitus. There is, there is diabetes insipidus. What is diabetes insipidus, by the way? What is diabetes insipidus, by the way? Okay. Let me draw a rough human sketch diagram. In the rough human sketch diagram, 
in the brain i would like to draw the pituitary in the brain this is the brain this is the pituitary pituitary have two portions anterior posterior posterior pituitary secrete a hormone known as adh you know adh adh is secreted in the blood by pituitary so this is the pituitary in the brain it is secreting adh in the blood so this adh is coming in the blood this is normal i am telling you in me you everyone we have pituitary we have anterior pituitary post so pituitary secrete adh in the blood this adh after coming in the blood what is its job what is its function this adh goes to the kidney in in all of us this adh goes to the kidney and in the kidney it does sodium and water retention it does sodium and water retention retention in the kidney right so that is the adh function normally now i am saying one of the tetracycline inhibit adh i will tell you the name of that tetracycline that antagonize adh so there is no adh so adh will not go to the kidney and show its action so there is no sodium water retention there is no sodium water retention so all the sodium and water is excreted in the urine so such patient have access of urine access of urination so all the water and sodium is excreted in urine because adh is antagonized right this is known as diabetes insipidus give me a thumbs up give me a thumbs up so the name of that tetracycline is demaclocycline there are seven tetracycline only demaclocycline causes diabetes insipidus no one else no one else minocycline do not causes doxycycline do not cause others do not cause only demaclocycline cause it antagonizes the adh action right so it reduces sodium water reabsorption so patient have much of the urine that is diabetes insipidus give me a thumbs up the next is the vestibule you know humans have external ear middle ear inner ear in the ear inner ear we have two things one is cochlea one is vestibule in ent you may have read it i guess cochlea is for hearing and vestibule is for balancing so kaan ke do kaam hote hain ek to sunna dusra balance banana inner ear have two functions one is hearing that is cochlear function one is balancing that is vestibular function right so tetracycline one of the tetracycline the answer is minocycline not all only minocycline it goes to the vestibule of the inner ear and damage the vestibule so patient have problem in balancing so such patient will have vertigo inko chakkar aayenge because they have problem in balancing ataxia and astigmatism so that is vestibular damage that is caused by only one that is minocycline right coming to the next increase intracranial pressure in the brain in the csf that is caused by all of that but to a later, lesser extent not very much the next is the phototoxicity a sunburn like reaction will happen just suppose i am the patient i am taking any of the tetracycline not any only dd dd the both d that is demaclocycline and doxycycline if i am taking any of them and i am going directly in sunlight i can have a sunburn like reaction that is phototoxicity because the drug is present in my blood that can lead to phototoxicity next is teeth and bone so tetracycline form chelates with calcium calcium is present in only two portions of the body the teeth contain calcium the bone contain calcium or can calcium nahi hota so tetracycline will go to teeth deposit there form chelates with the calcium tetracycline will go to bone form chelates there form form the chelates with the calcium so there is a problem in the teeth so since tetracycline deposited over the teeth it causes discoloration of the teeth so cosmetic cosmetologically it is not good discoloration discoloration that's why it is contraindicated in children usually in the crown usually in the crown can you see the discoloration is, is in the crown so it is contraindicated in uh, teeth in children jinme naye teeth aa rahe hain it is contraindicated and one is teratogenic not written here give me a thumbs up everyone give me a thumbs up we will revise can you tell me l k adv l k adv p t teacher teacher so please describe so l is liver damage it is caused by all i guess all maine isme kuch special nahi bataya yes it is caused by all of them liver damage jaundice and fatty liver kidney damage is caused by all except who will tell me except renal damage mein except ka answer kon batayega kidney damage is caused by all except doxy so doxy is safe in renal failure is pe bahut question aata hai anti anabolic a is anti anabolic all are anti anabolic there is no exception d what is d d is diabetes insipidus that is caused by only one demaclo demaclocycline causes diabetes insipidus v is vestibular toxicity that is ataxia nystagmus and vertigo that is only caused by minocycline no one else so only minocycline is vestibular toxic increased intracranial pressure is caused by all right next is phototoxicity phototoxicity are dnd that is doxy and demaclo are phototoxic rest are not there teeth and bone all teratogenic all so see where are the exceptions you have to learn that everyone give me a thumbs up i cannot simplify more than this these are the high sagas so all causes kidney damage except doxy demaclo causes diabetes insipidus mino cause vestibular damage and doxy and demaclo both are phototoxic 
so please learn the full form of the adverse effect please see the individual details i am done with adverse effects do you have any doubt in adverse effects right no so tetracycline neither given in pregnancy nor in children neither in pregnancy nor in children right so that is the reason we are done with adverse effects lk adv pt teacher it's time to study uses now i'm having another mnemonic for you for the uses i'm having one more mnemonic for you for the uses right what is the mnemonic vacuum bedroom 2 vacuum so name the bacteria which are most sensitive in which tetracycline is drug of choice first drug of choice name the bacteria i will tell you the list so vacuum v a c u m don't say w v a c u m vacuum bedroom may br br2 okay so vacuum, I will write it again. V for vibrio, vibrio cholerae, right? Causing cholera. So cholera may be a drug of choice. A for acne. Acne may be a doxycycline is a drug of choice. It is very common in teenagers. Acne happen on the face. And dox, doxycycline will be given. Doxycycline is a drug of choice. It is one of the tetracycline. C is chlamydia, LGV, and adrenaline inguinal. That is sexually transmitted diseases, STDs. U is ureoplasma. My, M is mycoplasma. Dono bhai bhai. Ureoplasma, mycoplasma. B is borrelia. R is rickettsia and T is tularemia, right? So tell me the full form. Vacuum, V-A-C-U-M. Vacuum the bedroom. Kar do. Vacuum the bedroom. Yeah. Say the full form. Vacuum the bedroom. Who will tell me the full form? Praveena, would you like to try? Priyanka, Amar, Kishore, Roy, anyone? Would you like to try? Vacuum. V for Vibrio cholerae. A for acne. C for chlamydia. Ureoplasma, mycoplasma. Dono saath mein. E for tularemia, right? Borrelia, rickettsia. It's very easy, I guess. Give me a minute. I guess it's very easy. Do you have any doubt in that? Vacuum the bedroom. Yes, Pramina. V for vibrio, A for acne, C for chlamydia, U for ureoplasma, M for mycoplasma, T for tularemia, B for borrelia, R for rickettsia. Very good. Very good. Very good, Roy. Very good. So, shall we proceed ahead? Shall we proceed? One more mnemonic for the users. Again, learn one. Don't, don't fall into. Learn one. If you don't like vacuum the bedroom, there's another mnemonic for you. BBC Marvel. You want to learn this? The full form is say. Whatever you learn, learn one only. So B for Borrelia. C for Chlamydia. M for my, Mycoplasma. Uh, A for Acne. R for Rickettsia. B for Vibrio. L for Lyme. Lyme's disease is Borrelia. Right? So the full form is same. I guess better is vacuum bedroom too. Whatever you like, learn one only. Right? So we are done. And this is the first choice. The tetracycline is the first drug of choice. Now there is a list in which tetracycline is the second drug of choice. But I am not giving you this list. You will get confused. First choice is more than sufficient for MCQs. I am done with chapter 1. Come on. Chapter 1 is done. Already done. Can we revise chapter 1? So after launching questions on this, I will go to the chapter number 2. Right? Chapter number 1. Tetracycline. Please help me in the revision. In the introduction, why tetracycline is known as tetracycline? Because it is having four benzene rings. Four benzene rings, that's why known as tetracycline. And it is obtained from actinomycetes. Right? In the classification, there are three categories. Category 1, 2, 3. In the category 1, we are having three drugs. Tetracycline, oxytetracycline, chlorotetracycline. In category 2, we are having two drugs DL. In category 3, we are having two drugs DM. In category 2, it is demeclocycline and lemicycline. In category 3, it is doxycycline and minocycline. Am I right? Yes, I am right. So, coming on the spectrum, it is broad spectrum. Against everything. Gram-positive foci, gram-negative foci, gram-positive bacilli, gram-negative bacilli, spirochetes, rickettsia, mycoplasma, everything. Mechanism of action. The most important is the mechanism of action. Let me come on mechanism of action. Can you tell me the mechanism of action? What is the mechanism of action here? Just a second. Uh, tell me it is acting on 30s or 50s. So it acts on 30s of the ribosome. Tell me the window it, it is degrading. P window, A window, A to P, ki P to A. It degrade A window. Since it degrade A window, it inhibits second step. That is coming off new tRNA at the A window. So peptide growth will not occur and it is not bacteriocidal, it is bacteriostatic. Resistance ke three ways you already know. The three ways of resistance. Bacteria will decrease in flux or increase in flux. Cover the ribosome with a protective covering and form enzymes against the tetracycline. Adverse effect, it is LK ADVPT teacher and uses its vacuum bedroom too. We will revise adverse effect and uses on a separate page. I am teaching you tetracycline. Can anyone help me with that? What is the mnemonic of adverse effect? LK ADVPT teacher and uses vacuum VACUM bedroom BR2. Vacuum the bedroom or vacuum bedroom 2. Whatever you say. Va vacuum the bedroom. Can you tell me the full forms? The last time. So, liver damage. 
kidney damage kidney damage is caused by all except doxy anti anabolic a for anti anabolic d for diabetes insipidus caused only by demaclo only by demaclo b is vestibular toxicity caused only by minocycline minocycline increase intracranial pressure i p is phototoxicity dd it is caused by dd demaclo and doxy t is tith tith and bone chelation discoloration of the tith and another t is teratogenic right coming on the users the full form of users the full form of users b for vibrio cholerae a for acne c for chlamydia ureoplasma mycoplasma right borrelia rickettsia tularemia i guess everything is fine and you don't have any problem chapter 1 is over shall i launch polls based on that shall i launch polls you have to write your answer in the chat box if you know the answer please write your answer in the chat box everyone please write your answer in the chat box tetracycline inhibit protein synthesis by what read the four steps read the four options i am giving you time to read the four options you tell me what is the correct answer so let me read the four options is does it inhibit initiation and cause misreading of the mrna is it the mechanism does it bind with 30s subunit of the rna and inhibit the binding of new amino acid t rna does it inhibit peptide transferase activity does it inhibit translocation what does it do what does it do i want everyone to participate those who got it right so uh, yes Naga Sri, Pravina, Kishore, Roy, Praveen, absolutely right, absolutely. You all are right. The correct answer here is B. It binds with 30th subunit of the ribosome and inhibits the A window so that new amino acid tRNA cannot come and bind there. Absolutely right, Sufi. Right. I have told you the mechanism of action of all four antibiotics which inhibit protein synthesis. I'm changing the question. Instead of correctly answer is B. Instead of tetracycline, yes, Priyanka. If I am asking amino glycoside. What is your answer from ABCD now? Amino glycoside. Same question, same uh, same four options. Amino glycoside कर दिया तो answer क्या होगा ABCD में से? Currently तो answer B है. Yes, doctor, the explorer. Tell me answer now. अब क्या answer होगा? If I am changing the question, amino glycoside inhibits step one. What does the answer now? So it inhibits initiation and cause misreading. A is the answer in that case. Absolutely right, Kishor. In that case, your answer will become A. Again, I will change the question. You know my way, right? I will change the question four times, right? Because of the four options. So again, I will change the question. This time, my question is chloram phenicol. Chloram phenicol. What is your answer now? The four same four options. Phenicol. Chloram phenicol inhibits step three. Step three is peptide peptide bond formation. For peptide peptide bond formation, you require an enzyme. The name of the enzyme is peptide peptide transferase enzyme. So no no not D Nagasa Nagasri it will be C yes Kishore it will be C Nagasri you got confused I guess so chloram phenicol inhibit do not inhibit step four it inhibits step three step three is peptide peptide bond formation and P two A shift for peptide peptide bond formation you require an enzyme the name of the enzyme is peptide transferase so can I say it inhibit peptide transferase yes for chloram phenicol answer will be C and the last one if I change the question and do it erythromycin or any azithromycin, erythromycin, any of the macrolide, you all know the answer will become B, D, that is it inhibits step number 4, that is inhibit the translocation. I guess the concepts are crystal clear to you. You can yourself understand that examiner can frame how many questions on the same question. Same question, same options. We are changing the question, so answer is different. Everyone give me a thumbs up. I guess you have understood. You all have understood. Shall I proceed ahead? So, correct answer in this case, I am asking tetracycline, so answer is B. Right. So I can ask anything to you. The four options were four different mechanism of action of the four different antibiotics. Everyone give me a thumbs up. Done? Yes. 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 Absolutely right, Sufi. So coming to the next question. The next question is in front of you. Tell me the answer. Which of the following tetracycline can be used in renal failure without dose adjustment? So I mean, which of the following tetracycline is safe in renal failure? I mean to say that, I mean to ask that, I guess, which of the following is safe in renal failure? Can you tell me the answer? The four options are in front of you. Is it oxytetracycline, doxycycline, demaclocycline or tetracycline? I told you very clearly. Yes, Mushim, Kishore, Amar, Nagasri, Roy, Pravina. Absolutely right. The correct answer is doxy. Only doxy is safe. Only doxy is safe in renal failure. Rest all causes renal failure. Right, right. Very good, Praveen, Pravina. Very good. So, correct answer here is B. The next question is in front of you. Okay, let me do the correction. It is 50, huh? not 5G. So 5G or 6G over okay. here. It is 50 and 60. Right. Tetracycline inhibit protein synthesis by acting on which portion of the ribosome? Tetracycline act on 30S, 50S, both 30 and 50S or 60S. What is your answer? What is your answer now? 
What is your answer now? Yes, Kishore. Absolutely right. Yes, Dr. The Explorer. Roy, absolutely right. So, yes, Amar. So, correct answer here is A. It acts on 30 years. Okay. I'm changing the question. I'm doing it. What is the second one? After tetracycline, I'm going to teach you the second chapter, chloramphenicol. So, what about chloramphenicol? What about chloramphenicol? What is the answer now? If I change the question, for tetracycline, answer is A. I agree. What about chloramphenicol? The chloramphenicol answer will become B. It is 50S. Chloramphenicol. What about erythromycin? Erythromycin ke liye answer is B. 50S. What about amino glycoside? My last question. Amino glycoside is both. So, the summary is that I am going to teach you four. First, I am going to teach you tetracycline, which is done. Second chapter is chloramphenicol, which I will start right now. After that, I will teach you amino glycoside. In the end, I will teach you erythromycin or macrolides. All macrolides in the end, I will teach you. Right? So, the summary is that it acts on, I am sorry, this one acts on 30S, this one on 50S, this one also on 50S and only amino glycoside on both 30 plus 50. Learn it. Now, any question coming, you can answer. Currently, I am asking for tetracycline, so answer is 30S. So, in this question for tetracycline, answer is A, 30S. Shall I move ahead? So, coming to the next question. Which of the following has maximum propensity for phototermatitis? Phototoxicity. Only two of them causes phototoxicity. I told you very clearly. Out of the seven tetracycline, two are phototoxic. Which two are phototoxic? Priyanka, Amar, Praveen, Sufi, Mushim. Which two are phototoxic? Come on. Absolutely right. The two Ds. The two Ds are phototoxic. D and D. D and D. Right. Doxycycline and demaclocycline. So, answer is doxycycline always, uh, obviously. So, correct answer here is B and you all are right. If instead of doxy, demaclo is also given, we will go with that, that also. Doxy and demaclo are equally phototoxic. So, correct answer here is B and you all are right. This is the next question in front of you. Which of the following is not true regarding tetracycline? Tell me not true. I'm asking not true. So, which is false? Which is false? It is not teratogenic. Is it true or not true? It causes tooth discoloration. Is it true or not true? It causes super infection. Is it true or not true? It leads to pseudomembranous colitis. Is it true or not true? Priyanka, I'm not asking the true one. I'm asking which of the following is not true. Tell me the answer. Yes, Sufi. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. So, it is not teratogenic. This statement is false. Because I told you very clearly, uh, L, K, Ad, B, P, T, teacher ka jo dusra T hai, that is teratogenic. So, tetracyclines are teratogenic. Tetracyclines are teratogenic and they are not teratogenic. This is wrong. Now, many students are seeing C and D. You got confused in C and D also. But no, sometimes, what is pseudomembranous colitis? Have you, have you heard this term? Pseudomembranous colitis is the inflammation of the colon and technically any antibiotic can lead to. So, tetracycline is one of the antibiotics that can also cause that. So, this statement is correct. Pseudomembranous colitis to kisi se bhi ho sakta hai. So, tetracycline bhi kari sakta hai na. Any antibiotic can lead to pseudomembranous colitis. Tetracycline is one of them. So, this statement is correct, not false. And super infection, sometimes it leads to super infection also. This is also correct. But it is not teratogenic. Ye to galat hai. Right. So, correct answer here is A, not D. No Priyanka, not D. Pravina, not C. Amar, not D. Answer is A. You got my point? Those who are saying C, D. Answer is not C and D. Answer is A. The C and D statement are correct. I am saying that. You got my point? This is the next question in front of you. Which antibiotic should not be given after milk, after drinking milk? And tell me the reason also. Tell me the reason also. So, is it chloramphenicol? Is it tetracycline? Is it erythromycin? Is it sulfonamide? Tell me the reason also. The next question is in front of you. Which of the antibiotic is not given with milk? So, tell me the answer. Sufi, why? Why tetracycline? Reason? Roy, why? Why tetracycline? Everyone is saying, yeah. So, yes, Roy, absolutely right. Because calcium, the milk contains calcium. And for, no, in India, I don't know why. Most of the patients, I have seen this mentality. Whenever I prescribe any drug to the patient, no, the patients say, okay, doctor, I will take it with milk. Why to take it with milk? They feel that like milk is they say it is good acting or I don't know what is the what is the mentality. But most of the patients prefer to take their medicines with milk. But whenever you are prescribing any of the tetracycline, ask them, don't take it with milk. You have to give negative instructions. If you don't uh, give this instruction to your patient, by default, they will take it with milk. So instruct them, don't take it with milk. It forms chillets with the milk. So avoid milking two hours before and after taking the tablet. Take at that time where you, when you are not drinking the milk because it forms chillates with the milk and it will not be absorbed. So correct answer here is tetracycline. We know tetracycline forms chelation with the calcium. This is the reason. So correct answer here is B. Right. So we are done with the first chapter. Let me start with second chapter. I will continue with all four right now. Right. 
So starting the second chapter now. The second chapter is chloram phenicol. Right. We will continue the table. Fill in the comparative table. In the introduction, write down it is obtained. It is obtained from this organism. It is obtained from streptomyces benezuelae. Uh, tetracycline was obtained from actinomycetes. Right. And chloram phenicol is obtained from streptomyces benezuelae. Right. Uh, it is the nitrobenzene moiety present in chloram phenicol because of which it is it is showing its antibacterial activity. So in, in, in the chloram phenicol, only one benzene ring is present. In contrast to tetracycline, we have four benzene rings were there. And here the nitro moiety is important. The nitro benzene moiety is important, which is important for antibacterial action. That is about the structure. So compare the structure of the two. Now every time we will do the comparison. Now in the structure, here there are four rings. Here there is one ring along with the nitro moiety is important. This one is obtained from actinomycetes and this one is obtained from streptomyces venezuelae. So you have to learn the name of the organism that is also comparative. Coming on classification, no classification. Only one drug, chloram phenicol, right? In tetracycline, we were, we were having seven tetracycline. The classification was applicable. But in chloram phenicol, the classification is not applicable because there is no classification. Only one drug is there, chloram phenicol, that's it. Coming on the spectrum, the same as that of tetracycline, diptocopate. It is also broad, broad spectrum. So gram positive, gram negative. Uh, so same, exactly same. I've written same, right? So it is gram positive foci, gram negative foci, gram positive bacilli, gram negative bacilli, uh, spirochetes, rickettsia, mycoplasma, protozoa, everything. So spectrum is same. There is no difference in spectrum. Coming on mechanism of action. Okay. Coming on mechanism of action. Who will tell me the mechanism of action of both of them in comparative manner? I've already taught you, no? Mechanism of action of all four. Can you tell me the mechanism of action? Okay, in a comparative way. So here, tetracycline acts on 30 years. Chloram phenicol acts on 50 years. Number one. Tetracycline are bacteriostatic. Chloram phenicol are also bacteriostatic. Both of them are bacteriostatic. There is no difference, right? But tetracycline inhibit A window, right? And inhibit step number two. That is coming of new amino acid tRNA on the A window. Chloram phenicol inhibit step number three. That is P2A shift. It inhibits peptide-peptide bond formation between the pre-existing and the new amino acid and P2A shift. So this is the comparison. You got my point? You got my point? Yes, Sufi, step number three. And it acts on 50 years. Very good. Very good, Prabhi. So mechanism of action. So which one is chloram phenicol from 1, 2, 3, 4? Which one is chloram phenicol? This one is chloram phenicol. Currently, we have studied tetracycline. This one is tetracycline. This one is aminoglycoside and this one is erythrocyte. Erythromycin. You can see the four steps. They are in front of you. Just a second. You can see all the four steps are in front of you. So you can see this is the chloram phenicol which is inhibiting P2A shift. Right? It is, it is inhibiting P2A shift that is peptide-peptide bond formation between the pre-existing and the new. For this bond formation, an enzyme is required peptidyl transferase. So that enzyme is inhibited by that. So chloram phenicol enter inside the bacteria, go to the 50S. On the 50S, it inhibit peptide-peptide bond formation between the new and between the old. So there is no shifting of old towards new. So P2A shift. P2A shift is inhibited. So protein synthesis is inhibited. So it is bacterial. This one. You can see this diagram. This is my diagram. You can see P2A shift. This is P window. This is A window. So P2A shift do not take place. On P window, always pre-existing one is present. P for P. And on, on A window, always new is present. So always pre-existing will go towards new. New will never go towards pre-existing. So P2A shift happens by peptide-peptide bond formation between the two. But peptide-peptide bond formation will not happen because the enzyme required for that, that is inhibited by chloram phenicol on 50S. On 50S. And that's why it is bacteriostatic. It is bacteriostatic. You got my point? You got my point? Everyone give me a thumbs up. Everyone. That is the mechanism of action. But there is one problem. Just suppose I am the patient. In my body, some of the bacterial infection is present. And I am coming to you. You are a doctor. Doctor, I am having this, this, this complaint. You have recognized that, ma'am, you are having one of the infection. I guess chloram phenicol is a good antibiotic for you. You take a course of antibiotic, chloram phenicol for five days, seven days, whatever is the course and doses, you will be all right and your infection is treated because inside you, there is a bacteria that will be killed by this antibiotic. So that is your, your treatment you have given to me. So I am following your commands. I am the patient. I am taking the chloram phenicol tablet. That will go inside me. That will go inside my blood. In my blood, two types of cells are present. The bacterial cell and human cell. My own cell. Bacterial cell and human cell. Now, the point is that this is chloram phenicol. This is chloram phenicol. Okay. This is a bacterial cell. This is the ribosome of the bacteria. And this is a human cell. The own cell. And this is the ribosome. Chloram phenicol enters in both cells equally. For tetracycline, I told you it preferentially enters in bacterial cell. 
very less commonly it enters in human cell and human back, human ribosomes are not susceptible for tetracycline but chloramphenicol equally affects both it inhibit it, it affects the 50s bacteria also 50s human also so it inhibit protein synthesis in bacteria also it inhibit protein synthesis in human cells also so bacteria cannot divide right the end result is that bacteria cannot divide bacteria will not die but it cannot divide that is bacteriostatic so the same with human cell human cell cannot divide so human cell ke liye bhi wo static ho jayega that human cell in which chloramphenicol have entered that cannot divide the cell will not die now maximum cell division kaha hota hai in human body maximum cell division kaha hota hai puri body mein from head to toe maximum cell division takes place in bone marrow agreed or not agreed because in bone marrow continuous blood is formed rbc wbc platelet they are formed from hematopoietic stem cell so continuous cell division is required there in the precursors you may be knowing that so whenever if i am taking a tablet of chloramphenicol it is going inside me it is absorbed it is going in my blood in my blood it is going inside the bacteria it's good i want that it should go inside the bacteria and do the bacteriostatic effect in the bacteria yes but it is going inside my bone marrow also from the blood it is going in my bone marrow also in my bone marrow it is causing static effect of the bone marrow and my cells cannot divide so patient have aplastic anemia aplastic anemia as a side effect so aplastic anemia means the bone marrow failure the bone marrow cells cannot divide so patient may rbc wbc platelet will not form patient have anemia because rbc is not formed patient have bleeding problems thrombocytopenia because platelets are not formed and patient have infections very frequently because the immunity is dropped because wbc will not form basically patient have pancytopenia because of bone marrow failure and bone marrow failure is the biggest threat biggest side effect this one is having that's why it is banned nowadays chloramphenicol is not used but for the for the mcq purpose you should know that Give me a thumbs up. You got the reason. You got the reason. Okay, humans have sixty and forty. Sufi, I agree. Then in that case, it will go on sixty. In that case, it will go on sixty. But do the same thing. It will bind with the A window. In human also, in, in uh, not A window. I'm sorry. It will inhibit P two A shift. In human also and bacteria also. Basically, it will inhibit P two A shift. That is peptide peptide bond formation. So peptide chain cannot grow. So it cannot grow. So bacteriostatic action. So it inhibits mammalian mitochondrial protein also. in the same way as compared to bacteria and bone marrow cells are more susceptible because maximum cell division takes place in bone marrow so bone marrow failure will be the biggest side effect so compare the mechanism of action now right so this one was acting on 30 years this one is acting on 50 years this one was bacteriostatic this one is also bacteriostatic but but tetracycline was inhibiting step number 2 that is a window is inhibited and chloramphenicol is inhibiting step number 3 that is peptide peptide bond formation and p2a shift You got it. Resistance is same three mechanism. Coming on the next heading, resistance. Resistance के लिए same three mechanism. Imagine this is chloramphenicol and this cell is bacterial cell, right? I am giving chloramphenicol to this bacteria. I want to kill this bacteria or bacteriostatic action in this bacteria. But bacteria do not want the bacteriostatic action. Bacteria want to grow. Bacteria want to divide. Bacteria is not liking that. So bacteria can do three things. Number one, either decrease influx, influx is come up, or increase efflux with vacuum cleaner. So that is the first mechanism. Influx come ho ya efflux zada ho. The first mechanism, right? Second mechanism, bacteria will cover the ribosome with protective protein. The second mechanism. The third mechanism, bacteria will form an enzyme. The name of the enzyme is chloramphenicolase that will degrade the chloramphenicol. The same three mechanism, exactly same. So you can see decrease permeability means decrease influx and increase efflux. You can see ribosomal insensitivity means ribosome is covered with the protective membrane, and you can see an enzyme. The name of the enzyme is transferase or chloramphenicolase that will inactivate the chloramphenicol. So an enzyme is formed. Give me a thumbs up. The same three mechanism. So the resistance ke mechanisms are same, no difference. Coming on adverse effect and uses. Again, it's time to study two mnemonics, two more mnemonics. Shall I come on the adverse effect of chloramphenicol? I'm having a mnemonic for you. The mnemonic is big super hyper. Big super hyper is the mnemonic. So B stands for bone marrow depression. That is the biggest side effect for which it is planned. सबसे पहले तो बोन मैरो डिप्रेशन ही बोलना है बोन मैरो फेलियर ही बोलना है बिकॉज ऑफ विच पेशेंट हैव पैनसाइटोपीनिया दैट इज एनीमिया थ्रोमोसाइटोपीनिया एंड इन्फेक्शन दैट इज ल्यूकोपीनिया सो बोन मैरो डिप्रेशन द फर्स्ट साइड इफेक्ट आई बिग का आई 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 इज इरिटेटिव इफेक्ट राइट इफ यू आर गिविंग ओरली पेशेंट विल हैव नोशियर वॉमिटिंग इफ यू आर गिविंग इंजेक्शन पेशेंट हैव पेन एट द साइड ऑफ द इंजेक्शन तो जिस भी रूट से दोगे वहां पर इरिटेशन होगा इफ यू आर गिविंग ओरल रूट जी आई टी इरिटेशन इफ यू आर गिविंग इंजेक्टेबल रूट the pain will be there in the muscle right so irritative irritative action right g is the biggest side effect one more important gray baby syndrome i will explain you what is gray baby g for gray baby super is super infection it causes super infection and hyper is hypersensitivity so big super hyper what is the mnemonic the mnemonic is bigger 
super hyper big super hyper say the full form b for bone marrow suppression i for irritative effect g for gray baby super infection hyper infection uh, hypersensitivity hypersensitivity is allergy allergy can be happen uh, by any antibiotic technically rash allergy hypersensitivity one and the same thing super infections are caused by many antibiotics so this is one of them bone marrow suppression pe bahut question aayenge gray baby syndrome pe aayenge what is gray baby syndrome gray baby bone marrow suppression you got it it is the most important cause of aplastic anemia among the drugs so three things will reduce in the blood the blood will have less rbc so anemia less wbc so a granulocytosis and less platelet that is thrombocytopenia basically patient have pancytopenia right so that is the thing irritative effect to theek hi hai gray baby syndrome kya hai so do never give toranfenicol to a infant or a neonate or a premature baby because in neonate or premature baby they cannot excrete it well because their liver is not uh, mature in babies the liver is immature so they cannot excrete it so even you are giving at normal doses normal doses that will accumulate in that body so because they are unable to excrete it right and in the newborn baby it will again do the bone marrow suppression not only not uh, in adults maximum cell division takes place in the bone marrow as i have told you if i am the taking chloramphenicol in my body maximum bone uh, cell division takes place in bone marrow but a neonate cell division takes place in all organ because the neonate is growing na cell division takes place in all organ so imagine if we have given chloramphenicol to some neonate so that will go in the blood of the neonate it will kill the bacteria okay it will go inside the cell of the bacteria and bacteria static action of the bacteria but it will enter in all the cells all the organs of the neonate right so it will enter in all organ of the neonate especially liver myocardium skeletal muscle and inhibit the growth inhibit the growth it is bacterial static action right so there is problem in the baby the baby will stop feeding the baby will do vomiting baby will be hypotonic hypothermic abdominal will be distension respiration become irregular so baby will blue baby will look cyanotic so it is a misnomer actually it is not gray baby syndrome it is blue baby it is gray baby nahi hoga baby cyanotic hoga but it is known as gray baby syndrome so that is the thing super infections and hypersensitivity is common i am done with adverse effect so adverse effect dono ka compare karo here it is big super hyper in tetracycline it was lk advani pt teacher now you will never forget never in your life coming on uses compare the uses okay what is the mnemonic for uses for chloramphenicol i am having a mnemonic as i told you never use it its uses highly restricted because of the fear of toxicity the main toxicity is bone marrow suppression right that's why uses highly restricted zarurat ho to hi to patient ko otherwise mat do kuch aur better option available hai to wo do iske liye mat jao so if some other better option is available for your patient select that if nothing is available nothing is available no other option is there then select chloramphenicol Chloram chloramphenicol is not a good antibiotic because side effects are more the side effect the biggest side effect is bone marrow suppression patient can be more in trouble as compared to benefit so risk benefit ratio mein risk is more as compared to benefit so that is the point so risk of serious infections severe aplastic anemia can be there so never use chloramphenicol for minor infections chote mote infection ke liye it is never used do not use chloramphenicol for the infections for which other safer antimicrobials are available for the infections for the diseases for which safer drugs are available don't use chloramphenicol avoid or diya bhi to ek hi baar dena life mein never give it repeated doses every every now and then every do teen mahine mein chloramphenicol ka ek course de lo no never give repeated dose so emergency drugs is not emergency but try to avoid its use right if you are giving chloramphenicol to any of your patient so uh, don't give for more than 2 weeks right to, don't give daily 2 to 3 grams more than 2 to 3 grams daily so in total 2 weeks total dose should be less than 28 grams just suppose daily you are giving 2 grams so in 2 weeks that is 14 days 14 into 2 will be 28 so never give more than 28 right so maximum duration is 2 week maximum dose per day is 2 to 3 g and total maximum dose is 28 g don't go beyond that and ask the person ask the patient to do cbc daily daily or alternately to do the cbc once you found anemia leukopenia or thrombocytopenia is very sad stop the treatment stop the treatment right so you have to do cbc daily or at least uh, alternately chloramphenicol is not coming in combination with any other drug it is alone tablet it is banned the combinations are banned in india so it is highly restricted drug still if you want to give uh, want me to give the list of the uses that there is a mnemonic bare tp b a r e bare tp b for bacterial meningitis it can be used the bacterial meningitis or pyogenic pus forming meningitis a for anaerobic infections anaerobic r for rickettsia right e for ear and eye infection that is conjunctivitis and endothelitis uh, t for typhoid 
and bleed for two cell losses. So bare TB is the name of it. Now compare. Here it was vacuum the bedroom. Here it is bare TB. What is the full form of bare TB? B for bacterial, A for anaer anaerobic infection, R for rickettsia, E for ERI, T for typhoid, and B for brucella. Everyone give me a thumbs up. Till now two chapters are over. Do you have any problem? Do you have any problem in understanding the two chapters? Shall I launch course based on this? And then I will move to the third chapter. We have to complete all four chapters now only. To be only. Shall I shall I launch course? Or you want to revise? Or is it done? Compare the introduction of both. See the structure. Compare the classification. There is classification in tetracycline. No classification in chloramphenicol. The most important. Compare the spectrum. Both are broad spectrum. Compare the uh, mechanism of action. This one acts on 30s. This one on 50s. This one and this one both are bacteriostatic. Uh, tetracycline inhibits step number two. That is A window. Chloramphenicol inhibits step number three. That is peptide directed bond formation and shift P to A shift. Resistance is same in both of them. Compare the adverse effect and uses. The subse main hota hai adverse effect and uses bolna. Right? Till now two chapters are done. Tetracycline and chloramphenicol. Right? Tell me the adverse effect of both. Tell me the uses of both. Who will tell me? Start with adverse effect tetracycline. Tetracycline ke adverse effect hai L, K, or V. T, T, teacher. Uses hai vacuum. V, A, C, U, M. Only one C, one U. Vacuum, the bedroom. Vacuum the BR. Vacuum the BR. That is the name of it. Coming on chloram pericol. Adverse effect big super hyper. Big super hyper. You got the adverse effect. Uses is bare TV. Bare. B-A-R-E. You can make some other mnemonics also. If something better is available, kindly let me know also. I will share with other students with the future, your juniors and other batches. Right? If some other uh, mnemonic is coming in your mind. So these are the mnemonics I have made. But you can make some something better available with you. So tell me the full forms. Start with tetracycline. Tell me the full form. Liver damage, kidney damage, anti-anabolic effect, diabetes insipidus, vestibular, vestibular damage, increased intracranial pressure, phototoxicity, tit and bone chelation, and teratogenicity. You know the specialty of each of them. I'm not going in the details. Tell me the full form of users. Who will tell me the full form of users? Full form of users. Vibrio colony, acne, chlamydia, ureoplasma, mycoplasma. T is tularemia. Here T is typhoid. Here T is tularemia. Borrelia is common in both of them, I guess. This is Borrelia, this is Borrelia. And Rickettsia is also common in both of them. Rickettsia is common. Now compare here we can B is bacterial meningitis. A is anaerobic reaction. R is Rickettsia. E is ear and eye infections. T is typhoid. B is Borrelia. Everyone give me a thumbs up. Everyone give me a thumbs up. Right. And what is the big super hyper? B is bone marrow suppression, irritative effect, gray baby syndrome, super infection, hypersensitivity. Everyone give me a thumbs up. Is my voice clear? My audio clear? Someone is saying my voice is not clear. What about others? Kishore Praveen? Sufi, is my voice clear? Write down. Video, audio, everything clear? Shall I continue? I guess I shall continue. Right. Okay. So I would like to launch polls on chloramphenicol. So gray baby syndrome is caused by... I guess this is a baby question and everyone can answer it. Everyone can answer it. I guess most easy question. Gray baby syndrome is caused by. Gray baby syndrome is caused by. Who will tell me? Yes, Mushin, Vivek, Praveen, Sufi. Tell me the answer. Amar? Of course, the answer will be B. Everyone knows that what is gray baby syndrome. Right. I will tell you red man syndrome also. But not maybe R. Yeah, in today's evening session. When I will teach you the drugs which inhibit cell wall synthesis inhibitor. Red man syndrome kaun karata hai? The answer is vancomycin. So red man syndrome alag hai, gray baby syndrome alag hai. Don't get confused. Gray baby syndrome is caused by chloramphenicol. Right, correct answer is B. Everyone is right. Very good. So only one question was there. Right, coming on the third chapter, aminoglycoside. I'm starting the third chapter, I mean, we are done with this, this. No, aminoglycoside is a little bit lengthier, right, as compared to other two. We will see some details of aminoglycoside and in the end one more chapter is there. Let me start aminoglycoside, start introduction. Start introduction, right? Aminoglycoside are known as aminoglycoside because the amino groups, that is amino group, is glycosidically linked with the sugar. So amino glycosidically linked with the sugar. That is aminoglycoside, the meaning of the aminoglycoside. So you can write the structure, amino is linked with the sugar glycosidically. That's why known as aminoglycoside. So in the introduction, try to explain the structure. Tetra is known as tetracycline because four rings. Chloramphenicol may, the activity is due to benzo nitrobenzene moiety. 
and in amino glycoside there is an amino group linked with the sugar glycosidically that's why known as amino glycoside coming on the classification the next is the classification yeah there is an important classification here so classification is according to two things whether the antibiotic that is amino glycoside are systemic or topical listen amino glycoside ki tablet nahi aati hai it is not oral form systemic is injectable intramuscular injections and topical is ointments and eye drops eye drops and ointments are available right so only injection and topical form is available there is no amino glycoside available in the form of the tablet syrups oral form no not available so systemic or topical in the systemic we are having eight options in the topical we are having two options so total 10 amino glycosides are available in the body learn the classification first classification is very important very important so in the topical only two are there let's finish that first so neomycin framycin nf neomycin and framycin neomycin framycin that's it these are the two topical one for which neomycin ke eye drops aate hain and framycin ke ointments aate hain right so ointments and eye drops are available topical one coming on systemic one there are eight so we will require a mnemonic so there is a mnemonic to learn the eight the mnemonic is in front of you the mnemonic is in front of you tangs tangs kp t a n g s s k p tangs kp let me write it here tangs double s k p right tangs kp we can make some pattern mnemonic also if you are having it kindly give it to me t for tobramycin a for amikacin n for natlimycin nat natlimycin g for gentamycin there are two s there are two s streptomycin and cesomycin a is carnomycin and p is aromycin so tangs kp let me summarize amino glycosides they are of two types the one systemic given injectable and the one topical which are given in the form of the eye drops or ointments so let me first finish the topical one only two are there and f the mnemonic is nf and systemic one they are eight in number the mnemonic is t a n g w s tanks k p total eight so here total eight are there here total two are there so total 10 amino glycosides are there now we will say try to say the full form can you help me it is neomycin and framycin very easy neomycin and framycin that is topical one coming on systemic one in the systemic one uh, it is tobramycin amikacin natlimycin gentamycin streptomycin cesomycin carnomycin and paromycin everyone i tried it at least i tried it so total 10 are there 8 plus 2 learn them separately the two mnemonics are in front of you tanks kp and nf so the mnemonic is tanks kp and nf so have i simplified the classification at least i try to simplify it right and yes so it is written in front of you if you want to learn the systemic the mnemonic is with you if you want to learn topical the mnemonic is with you total 10 are there The tetracycline are seven in number. Chloramine is called no classification. Only one part chloramine is called. And the amino glycoside are ten in number. Eight are systemic, two are topical. Shall I proceed ahead? Shall I tell you the spectrum? No, spectrum is very unique. Spectrum is very unique. It acts against only gram-negative bacilli. There are four type of organisms now: gram-positive cocci, gram-negative cocci, gram-positive bacilli, gram-negative bacilli. I want to tell you very unique thing. Listen, what more antibiotics I am telling you today's chapter, today's topic. The first chapter tetracycline is over, right? The second chapter chloramphenicol is over. Now I am teaching you the third one amino glycoside, and fourth I will teach you erythromycin or macrolide. So these are four protein synthesis inhibitors. Say yes or no. Tetracycline is broad spectrum. Tetracycline is broad spectrum. That is, it is active against gram positive cocci, gram negative cocci, gram positive bacilli, gram negative bacilli. It is broad spectrum. Same with chloramphenicol. It is also broad spectrum, active against all four. Amino glycoside is active only against what I have told you. It is only against gram-negative bacilli. See, only against gram-negative bacilli. Only, only against gram-negative bacilli. So, baki three no ko bura lagya. So, erythromycin is active against the remaining three. Have you got it? What I mean to say? I guess you got it. I guess samajdar ko ishara kafi hai, right? So, here only gram-negative bacilli, and here in erythromycin the remaining three, the remaining three. Now, compare the spectrum of all four. That I mean to say. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up if you got it. So can you see here I have written it is only against gram negative bacilli. That's it. And erythromycin me bache hoye tino aayenge. Gram positive ko kya hai? Gram negative ko kya hai? And gram positive bacilli hai? No gram negative bacilli. Everyone give me a thumbs up. Come on, are you people there? Sai, Vivek, Pradeep, Priyanka, is anyone listening me live? So give me a thumbs up. Have you got the spectrum? I have compared the spectrum of the four. That is the relevance of the spectrum. I have compared the spectrum of the four. Coming on mechanism of action. Can you tell me mechanism of action of amino glycoside? Who will tell me? Amar, 
Will you tell me? Mechanism of action. Glycoside. Promene. Kishore, would you like to tell? Which step out of the four steps? Step 1, 2, 3, 4. And which window? Tell me the number of steps. Tell me the number of the window. Who will tell me? Which step and which window? I have told you the mechanism of action of all four together. So tell me. Yes. So we make not 30 years. It is 50 years. Still it is 50 years. Pali baat hoi 50 years ko karega. Right. Uh, 50 years ribosome pe yes to be. It is on P window and step number one that is initiation. So it inhibits protein synthesis. Of course it is inhibit protein synthesis. The chapter is protein synthesis inhibitor. But at your level itna bolna kafi nahi hai. So it no. I am sorry. It acts on 30 years also, 50 years also and junction also. It acts everywhere. It acts, yes, Vivek, you are right. It acts on 30, 50, and 50 plus 30 all. And it inhibits step number one. That is initiation. Where is the diagram? This one. Please see, I want to explain you something here. See the diagram. This is step number one. Where is my diagram? Mira diagram I I forgot to put. Okay. So can you see this is step number one? The step number one, this is the first amino acid coming at the P window. Let me draw it. So can you see this is a ribosome? Yes. This is 30 years. Okay. This is 50 years. Okay. See the two windows. This is window number P. This is window named as A. Right. Now see this is mRNA coming here. This is the mRNA fitting here. This is codon number 1. C1. And this is codon number 2. C2. This is C3, C4, C5. That's all. Right. Now the first amino acid is coming and binding here. Corresponding to C1. This is A1. Corresponding to C1. This step is known as initiation. Right. What I am saying, amino glycoside, what does it do? Amino glycoside inhibit P window. So as soon as this is inside the cell, as soon as you are giving amino glycoside tablet, not tablet, injection or topical, amino glycoside enters inside the bacterial cell. After entering, it goes on 30 years also. It goes on 50 years also. It goes on junction also. 30 plus 50 years. Pehli baat. After that, it inhibits P window. Since the P window is inhibited, initiation will not happen. If initiation will not happen, by mistake, if it is happening also in some of the bacteria, agar ho bhi gaya, to uske baad second cheese hogi misreading. What do you mean by misreading? Misreading ka matlab kya hota hai? Specific codon codes for specific amino acid. We know there are 64 codons coding for the 20 amino acids. So they are very specific. So some, just say UAG codes for this only. UUU codes for this only. AUG codes for this. So they are very specific. And something mis misreading means one of the codon coding normally for one but not uh, another amino acid is coming. So C1 codes for A1 but instead of A1, A3 is coming. That is misreading. So two things are happening. Pelto initiation nahi hoga aur galti se ho gaya to misreading hoga. That is my point. So pelto initiation nahi hoga aur galti se ho gaya to misreading hoga. So initiation, inhibition and misreading two things will take place. And it is bacteriostatic also and cellular also. It is both. Bacteriostatic and static. Now compare the mechanism of action of the three to up to 10 now. So tetracycline was acting on 30 years, chloramphenicol acting on 50 years, amino glycoside acting on 30 years also, 50 years also, junction also. Very easy. Tetracycline inhibiting A window. That's why step number 2. Right. Chloramphenicol inhibit peptide peptide bond formation. That's why step number 3. That is P2A shift. Uh, and amino glycoside inhibit A window. So it inhibit initiation, it causes misreading. The first one, tetracycline, is only bacteriostatic. Chloramphenicol is also bacteriostatic, but amino glycoside is bacteriostatic as well as civil. Give me an answer. Resistance is same mechanism out there. I am skipping the resistance. You already know the three mechanisms of resistance now. Till now, I guess. The first one is increase, um, uh, uh, decrease in plus or increase E plus. You know decrease in plus, increase E plus. The second is the protection of the ribosome. And third, formation of the enzyme that will degrade the uh, drug that is amino glycoside. So the three mechanisms are same. I have told you many times the mechanism of resistance is same. Coming on adverse effect and uses. Now it's time to study the adverse effect. Again, time for the new mnemonic. So I'm having mnemonic for that. The mnemonic is on HT. Switch on wala O double N on. O double N on. On HT. On HT. Autotoxic, the 2N. Nephrotoxic and neurotoxic. Autotoxic, nephrotoxic, neurotoxic. Autotoxic in the ear. Nephrotoxic in the kidney. Neurotoxic in the neuromuscular junction. So three toxicities are there. H is always hypersensitivity and E is teratogenic. So please make a list compound teratogenic. This one is teratogenic. Give me a thumbs up. So let me describe one one. Autotoxic. So in the ear, in the inner ear of human, inner ear of human, we have cochlea and we have semicircular canal. Cochlea is required for hearing and the vestibule. Semicircular canals means vestibule. Vestibule. Vestibule is required for balancing. Right. So ear is having two functions. Hearing and balancing. Kaan, sunne ki balance karne ki dono ki kaan hata hai. 
सुनने का काम कॉकलियर करता है और बैलेंसिंग का काम वेस्टिबुल करता है सो वेनेवर आई से ऑटो टॉक्सिसिटी बीइंग अ मेडिकल स्टूडेंट यू शुड आस्क मी मैम व्हिच ऑटो टॉक्सिसिटी इज इट कॉकलियर और इज इट वेस्टिबुलर इन द ईयर इट इज डैमेजिंग समथिंग इज इट डैमेजिंग कॉकलिया सो देयर इज प्रॉब्लम इन द हियर इज इट डैमेजिंग वेस्टिबुल सो देयर इज प्रॉब्लम इन बैलेंसिंग सो माय आंसर बोथ सो एमाइनो ग्लाइकोसाइड आर बोथ टॉक्सिक दे आर कॉकलियो टॉक्सिक एज़ वेल एज़ वेस्टिबुल टॉक्सिक so person have problem in hearing also the person have problem in balancing also right hearing may the person will become deaf the person will have bilateral deafness so just suppose i am giving the injection to my patient so injection of one of the amino glycans and by mistake i have given more dose by mistake i have given more dose so the patient will have toxicity so from the blood the drug will go to the cochlea and damage cochlea and damage the vestibule also give me a thumbs up the problem is that in vestibular toxicity there is deafness Oh uh, sorry in cochlear toxicity there is deafness as i told you cochlear toxicity is the deafness and vestibular toxicity is the vertigo usko chap kar rahe hain right cochlear is irreversible once you stop the drug it is irreversible vestibular is reversible matlab deafness is forever a patient will sue you patient will take you to the court if you are doing this mistake so don't give overdose of the amino glycoside they can cause permanent deafness ye to chala jayega once you stop the drug vestibular damage will be gone away बट कॉकलियर विल बी परमानेंट यू गॉट ना पेशेंट छोड़ेगा नहीं वो बायलेटरल ईयर से डेफ हो जाएगा पेशेंट नहीं छोड़ेगा तुम्हें राइट सो दैट डोंट डू दिस मिस्टेक यू गॉट माय पॉइंट सो इट इज बोथ टॉक्सिसिटी राइट कॉकलियर टॉक्सिसिटी इज ड्यू टू डिस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ द सेंसरी सेल्स इन द कॉकलिया एंड द कॉकलियर टॉक्सिसिटी इज इरिवर्सिबल द डैमेज इज इरिवर्सिबल पेशेंट द कॉकलियर डैमेज सो यू नो हैव यू सीन द डायग्राम ऑफ कॉकलिया द कॉकलिया इज लाइक दिस इन द इनर ईयर इट इज 2 एंड 1/2 टन इन ईएनटी इट इज स्टॉप नाउ it is 2 and 1/2 ton dhai ton ka hota hai 2 and 1/2 2 and 1/2 ton is the cochlea right so this is known as base of cochlea and going inside 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 this is known as apex of cochlea someone have taught you in the ent ent teacher have taught you na this so this is the apex so we have cells outer and inner hair cells present everywhere outer hair cells inner hair cells in the base also cochlea also so tell me which cells are damaged kaun se cells jayenge so the the damage will start from the base and go gradually towards the apex the damage is in the outer hair cells not inner hair cells give me a thumbs up so damage start from the base go towards the apex damage occurs in outer ye sab mcq mein the one liner mcq pehle behra pan kiske liye aayega the first deafness will occur to high frequency sound first patient is unable to hear high frequency still low frequency is heard right and gradually it continues continues and gradually complete deafness is there high and low both will be deaf so deafness is first for high frequency sound and deafness the miserable part is that the deafness is permanent deaf now once the patient become deaf now he will be deaf forever once you stop the drug also the patient remain deaf right and uh, that is the deafness right vestibular damage is the balancing so patient will have vertigo usko chakkar aayenge dizziness vomiting right nausea ataxia whenever some can have a uh, vertigo no the vomiting center in the brain get stimulated you may have certain have you travel in some amusement parks where the rides are there some dangerous rides are there where the person is flip flap everywhere in in all directions so in you know some uh, great amusement park you may have seen so some persons vomit when they feel like vertigo so vertigo stimulates the vomiting center in the brain so whenever vestibular damage is there along with the vertigo vomiting and nausea is uh, always occurs together give me a thumbs up but this one will go away once you stop the drug in the next few weeks this will reverse thankfully it will reverse so cochlear symptoms is the deafness and vestibular symptoms is the vertigo nausea and vomiting give me a thumbs up this one is uh, irreversible that is permanent and this one is irreversible that is autotoxicity autotoxicity so you never give other drugs which causes autotoxicity along with amino glycoside so in pharmacology total five drugs causes autotoxicity one is amino glycoside that i am teaching right now four more are there furosemide that is a diuretic ciprofloxacin that is an anti cancer drug vancomycin and amphotericin b right so these are five drugs total which causes autotoxicity so never give them together if you are giving amino glycoside never give these drugs along with that just suppose there is a patient in my clinic having edema also and having some infection also for infection i am giving amino glycoside for edema i can't give furosemide i have to stop furosemide temporarily till amino glycoside is going because both are autotoxic autotoxicity will be exaggerated give me a thumbs up so that is about the autotoxicity coming on nephrotoxicity that is kidney damage so in the kidney we have nephron in the nephron we have glomerulus and apart from it we have tubules pct loop of hanley dct collecting duct 
So nephron is damaged by the aminoglycoside. Which portion of the nephron? The complete tubules. It is not glomerular damage. It is tubular damage. In the tubule PCT, loop of handy, DCT, everything is damaged. So basically tubular necrosis occurs with aminoglycoside. So inability to concentrate urine. The patient will have and again it is reversible. Thankfully this one is reversible. So never give aminoglycoside with another drugs which are nephrotoxic like amphotericin B, cisplastin and cyclosporin. Right. So we are done with autotoxicity. We are done with nephrotoxicity. Coming on neuromuscular blockage. So it is causing neuromuscular blockage. That's why the patient may have acute muscle paralysis. Acute muscle paralysis can happen because of neuromuscular junction um, blockage. Right. Hypersensitivity to hoi sakta allergy. And it is teratogenic. If you are giving aminoglycoside to a pregnant lady, the neonate will be born deaf. And the lady will not, will not leave you. So never give aminoglycoside to any lady who is pregnant. The newborn will be deaf. Newborn will be deaf. And it is permanent. It will not be cured. Bilateral deafness, complete deafness can be there. So it is teratogenic. Give me a thumbs up if you got it. So whenever any young or reproductive age female coming to your clinic with any complaint, any uh, uh, infection and you want to prescribe aminoglycoside, proactively you ask this leading question, are you pregnant? Because sometime in India, the ladies are very shy and they don't tell you that doctor, I'm pregnant. So they don't know what can happen with the help from these antibiotics you are writing. So you have to ask this leading question to all reproductive age ladies before prescribing anti uh, and aminoglycoside. You want to become sure. If he is not pregnant, then only you can prescribe in safer doses. The dose is very important. So here you have seen how important side effects are. I'm teaching you aminoglycoside side effect. The most important is the autotoxicity in which both toxicity is there: cochlear, vestibular. In cochlear toxicity, deafness is there. In vestibular toxicity, vertigo and tinnitus is there. This one is permanent and this one is reversible or temporary. Nephrotoxicity, the tubules are damaged, so protein um, concentration ability of the kidney is gone. Neuromuscular blockage paralysis can happen. This is allergy, this is teratogenic. Everyone give me a thumbs up if you got the adverse effect. So most important is the doses. Coming on users. Now, unfortunately, you can see the adverse effect uh, pneumonic till now. For users, I don't have a use ka mnemonic here. I don't have use ka mnemonic. It is used only for gram-negative bacilli. No? So it is used for all gram-negative bacterial infections. Right. It is used for TB also. It is used in intestinal sepsis. It is used in intestinal amoebiasis. And some topical applications. The topical application. So I don't have any mnemonic. You can learn by yourself as it is. So I am done with this chapter also. But before ending, I would like to add one more thing here. The dosing. Here I am teaching you dosing separately. You will say I am dosing up to nahi padha, Why you are teaching dosing separately? Because they are dangerous. Even a little bit more dose can cause permanent deafness. So dosing is very important here. Because they have low safety margin. Aminoglycosides have very low safety, safety margin. So what is the dose? What is the dose? So learn the dose of gentamicin, tobramycin, cesomycin, netlimycin. In sub ka dose at 3 mg per kg per day. Weigh your patient. You should have a weighing machine at your clinic. So your assistant or you should weigh the patient. Whatever patient, whosoever is coming in your clinic, the patient always check the weight. So according to the weight, decide the dose. There is no same tablet. And no. If the weight of the patient is 60 kg, 16 to 3, 180. 180 will be the dose. If the weight of the patient, maybe uh, it is not 60, maybe 80. The person is obese, maybe 100. So dose will vary according to that. So whatever is the dose, 3 mg per kg per day. So just suppose the weight is 60. So 16 to 3, 180 milligram. That to one, not one time. Divide in three doses. So it's three bar. Ek subah, ek dupar mein, ek raat mein. Right? So take it three times. So divide into three. Right? Uh, so take 60, 60, 63 times. Right? Like this. You have to divide. And the dose of streptomycin, kanamycin, amikacin is 7.5 milligram per kg. So 16 to 7.5. And divide into three doses. So that is the dose you have to say. Right? So divide into three equal parts every eight hours. And that is not oral, that is injectable. So three time injections. So this is peculiar dose that you have to learn. Now the dose only don't, don't, don't really depend on the intake. The dose actually working in the blood, the plasma concentration of the drug depends on two things. What is the intake and what is the excretion? Suppose you are, you, I taught you this chapter and you are very beware of it. And when patient is coming, you will give the safe doses. You are giving your drug in the safe doses. You are very cautionate now. And you will give, whenever you will prescribe anti um, um, this aminoglycoside, you are looking at the doses and you are giving within safe range. So are you safe? No, you can't. You never know which patient is having renal failure. So you are giving even at safe range, but the patient is in renal failure, so patient is not excreting the drug. So you are giving in safe, still the drug can cause toxicity because it will accumulate in the blood that is not excreted. 
So renal clearance before prescribing the doses, renal clearance to see GFR is very important. If the patient is having normal GFR, these are the doses. If the patient is having renal failure, then what are the doses? So if the GFR or the clearance is 70%, if the clearance is 70, so give 70% of the dose. Total, you have calculated 180. 180 is 70%. Just for 60 kg patient I am talking about. If the clearance is 50, give 50% of the dose. Likewise, you have to reduce the dose according to renal insufficiency. So it depends on the clearance. Give me a thumbs up. Now there are some one-liners on which MCQs come. The last thing. So which is the most commonly used among aminoglycoside? Answer is gentamicin. That is most commonly used. Which is maximally active against pseudomonas? Answer is tobramycin. Tobramycin is maximum active uh, against pseudomonas. Which is used to treat gonorrhea? Gonorrhea. It is as actinomycin. It is a new one introduced, actinomycin. So you have to learn these one-liners. I am done with the chapter. I am done with the third chapter, aminoglycoside. Now only fourth one, the last one is remaining. Everyone first give me a thumbs up. Uh, would like to learn some questions from the chapter number three, aminoglycoside. The first question is in front of you. Can you answer it? Are you people there? Give me a thumbs up first. Are you people there? Can you see me, hear me? Give me an answer. So mechanism of action of streptomycin. First identify what is streptomycin. So, streptomycin is an aminoglycoside. You should know that. All mycins. The suffix is mycin. So, streptomycin is one of the aminoglycoside that Aadhe Bacche to Mahi Fail Ho Jayenge Day 1. Don't know streptomycin is an aminoglycoside. Now, tell me which step it is inhibiting. What does it is inhibiting? Is it inhibiting translation? Is it inhibiting signal transduction? Is it inhibiting citric acid cycle? Is it inhibiting mitochondria? What does it inhibit? So, all aminoglycoside inhibit protein synthesis. Which step of protein synthesis? They, inhibit, they do not inhibit transcription. They inhibit translation. Translation may be step number one. That is initiation. To be very specific and precise. So correct answer is A and you all are right. Very good. Vivek, Kishore, Sufi, Amar. Very good. So correct answer here is A. Yes, Prabhi. So shall I proceed? This is the next question in front of you. I want everyone to participate. Everyone. Which of the following aminoglycoside is not available for parenteral? Not available. There are two. Now listen, the question is very easy and tricky one. So, there are two types of antimicrobials. The systemic one, that is parenteral. Systemic one are parenteral, right? And the topical one and the second one are the topical. So, topical one are only two. That is NF. I told you very clearly. What are the NF? That is uh, neomycin and framycin. These are topical. And systemic one are eight. The mnemonic is TANGS. T-A-N-G-S-S. TANGS uh, K-P. I guess, yeah. TANGS K-P was the mnemonic. Now, what is the question? See, see the question. Which of the following aminoglycoside is not available in parenteral? So, which is not parenteral? So, basically, which is topical? So, examiner is not asking you directly topical aminoglycoside. He is asking you indirectly. He is asking you indirectly. Yes, correct. So, topical one are only two, neomycin and framycin. Whatever available, available in the options, we will go for that. So, framycin is available. Neomycin is not available. So, I will go with C. You all are right. Yes, Kishore, Vivek, Praveen, Sufi, Amar. Again, you all are right. So, correct answer is framycin. Instead of primacin, if neomycin is also present, I will go for that also. Give me a thumbs up. Yes, NF. So, see the beauty of the question. Examiner is not asking you directly which one is topical. He is asking you indirectly which is not parenteral. So, not parenteral means topical. You should know only two roots are available. Right? So, the tricky questions are there. Anyways, coming to the next question. Tell me the answer. Aminoglycoside causes hearing loss by damaging what? We know it causes hearing loss by damaging cochlea. So, where the cochlea? Does it damage basal tongue of the cochlea or does it first damage apical, apical tongue? You know cochlea have two and half tongue, right? So, this one is known as basal, base and this one is known as apex. So, damage start from where? Which cells are most sensitive? And the second question, is it inner cell, outer cell, inner cell, outer cell? Which cells are damaged first? Which cells are damaged first? What do you want to say? First, base or apex means decide karo. So, answer is base, not apex. No Praveen, no Priyanka, not apex. The, the damage start from base. Why you all are saying D? Main galat ki tum sab galat bol ho. Praveen, Priyanka, Vivek, you all are saying D. Why? I guess base is start over. I told you, no. Amar, you are also saying D. Let me check them. No, no. Why you all are saying D? The answer is B. Majority is saying D is still so high. I got confused, Ruki. I am wrong. No, it's, it's not D. Base is damaged. I told you very clearly. So, these are the, now listen. Let me draw the diagram of the cochlea. So this is the diagram of cochlea is like this. It is two and half ton, right? This is base and going towards inner, inner, inner. This is apex. Now throughout the base and apex, we have outer cells also, inner cells also. So let me draw with red color. These all are outer hair cells, right? 
from base to apex we are having these outer hair cells and we are having inner hair cells also so from base to apex we are having these inner hair this is a rough diagram ha huh? ent mein tum pura detail padhoge right so this is inner hair cells also now tell me two answers tell me two answers clearly uh amino glycosides cause cochlear damage so base se start hoga ki apex se so answer is base okay base se outer cells ki inner cell so our answer is outer cell so outer cell of the base from here damage is starting and gradually it will proceed 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 and involve everything so answer is outer base cell base ka outer now you will not get confused so you got it and others those who are saying d have you got it praveen priyanka vivek amar have you got it give me a thumbs up so answer is b not d clarify right give me a thumbs up if you got it give me a thumbs up come on now you will not do this mistake again so outer cells of the base that is the answer right yes yes praveen absolutely right so the next question is in front of you so which of the following is a side effect of streptomycin tell me one of the following is a side effect what is the mnemonic side effect of streptomycin streptomycin is a amino glycoside so tell me the mnemonic what is the mnemonic the mnemonic is on ht on ht so is phototoxicity coming in this mnemonic no hepatotoxicity no autotoxicity so my answer is autotoxicity now again most of the students have this mentality ki jab all of the above option mein hai to go with that no all of the above is not the answer aisa nahi hai ki all of the above hai to wo laga do aisa zaruri nahi hai correct answer is c correct answer is c phototoxicity and hepatotoxicity are not seen here but yeah phototoxicity and hepatotoxicity are the side effects of tetracycline i must say yes tetracycline right lk advani pt teacher mein sab aate hain right lk ka l hai aur pt ka p hai right so these are side effects of tetracycline not amino glycoside correct answer here is c. yes you all are right very good on ht absolutely right supi the next question is in front of you can you answer it all of the following drugs are administered orally except one of them is not given orally oral formulations are not at all available tablets aati nahi hai uski so is it ciprofloxacin ciprofloxacin is a quinolone is it cortrimoxazole cortrimoxazole is the combination of sulfonamide and trimethoprim we have studied in the morning right ciprofloxacin is a quinolone gentamicin is a amino glycoside and amoxicillin is penicillin so four different categories are there so penicillin's ki tablets are available quinolones ki to tablet hi aati hai right and cortrimoxazole ki bhi tablet available hai but amino glycoside ki tablet nahi aati hai amino glycoside comes only in two form the injectable one and topical one so the correct answer here is c gentamicin any any amino glycoside is there i will go with that so gentamicin is the answer and you all are right very good correct answer here is c good so coming to the next question widest spectrum which of the following have widest spectrum amino glycoside that you have to learn sabse wide spectrum hota hai amikacin ka it was given in the one liners right so amikacin is the widest spectrum you have to learn it is amikacin right okay i'll repeat question okay can you tell me the answer of this all of the following are true about amino glycoside except all of the following are true about amino glycoside except can you tell me the answer which of the following is not true i'm asking which of the following is not true all of the following are true except read the four options they are bacteriostatic they are distributed only extracellularly they are excreted unchanged in urine they are teratogenic so what you all are saying i don't know yes vivek you are right they are bacteriostatic this is wrong because they are bacteriostatic and bactericidal both so basically they are bactericidal so this statement is wrong the rest of the statements are fine so correct answer is not c no 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 praveen c is correct it is excreted unchanged in urine why you are getting confused here i have not talked anything about the urine they are excreted unchanged in urine but the only thing gfr should be normal the clearance should be normal they are excreted unchanged in the urine so this option is correct a is wrong so go with a got it okay uh you can give the answer i guess easy question neurological transmission is affected by which of them are neurotoxic which of them are neurotoxic which of the following antibiotic is neurotoxic the option is sulfonamide nitrofurantoin isoniazid anti tb drug and streptomycin who will tell me the correct answer what is the correct answer here yes so streptomycin is a amino glycoside and amino glycoside are neurotoxic the mnemonic is on ht on ht mein o autotoxic hai first n is nephrotoxic what is the second n second n is neurotoxic so neurotoxic amino glycosides are neurotoxic and you all are right it is d many of you are saying vivek you are saying c why you are saying c isoniazid isoniazid you are getting confused okay isoniazid i will teach you isoniazid also to, today it is a anti tubercular drug 
इसमें न्यूरोटॉक्सिसिटी होती है आई एग्री दैट इज पैरिफेर न्यूरोटॉक्सिसिटी इसमें होती है बट द रीजन विवेक विवेक द रीजन फॉर पैरिफेर न्यूरोटॉक्सिसिटी इन आइसोनियाजिट इज नॉट द ट्रांसमिशन इट इज नॉट ड्यू टू द ट्रांसमिशन इंटरफेरेंस इट इज ड्यू टू वाइटामिन बी6 डिफिशिएंसी दैट इज पैराडॉक्सिन डिफिशिएंसी दैट आई विल टीच यू इन आइसोनियाजिट सो विवेक इज राइट ही इज गेटिंग कंफ्यूज्ड बट हिज कंफ्यूजन इज राइट I appreciate Vivek. If you are getting confused with this reason, you are saying C for this. So isoniazid also causes neurotoxicity, but that is not due to transmission. The word to be picked here is transmission. Actually, streptomycin is inhibiting the transmission. It is neuromuscular blockage. That's why toxicity is there. Isoniazid में toxicity होगी vitamin B6 की deficiency के की वजह से. Isoniazid causes vitamin B6 toxicity uh, deficiency. That's why neurotoxicity will be there. Now give me a thumbs up. Have you got it? All of us here. The correct answer is D. बट सी में कंफ्यूज नहीं होना है दैट आई एम टेलिंग यू गिव मी अ थम्स अप करंटली एक ही चैप्टर पढ़ाया उसी के क्वेश्चंस लॉन्च कर रही हूं तो क्वेश्चंस आर इजी बट वंस यू विल फिनिश एवरीथिंग नाउ यू विल गेट कंफ्यूज इन दैट गिव मी अ थम्स अप बिकॉज़ यू नो अबाउट अदर्स आल्सो करंटली यू डोंट नो एनीथिंग अबाउट नाइट्रोफ्यूरिन ट्रेन करंटली यू डोंट नो एनीथिंग अबाउट आइसोनियाजिड राइट दैट्स व्हाई द क्वेश्चंस आर इजी फॉर यू गिव मी अ थम्स अप शैल आई प्रोसीड शैल आई प्रोसीड टू द लास्ट चैप्टर द फोर्थ चैप्टर द मैक्रोलाइड दैट वाज योर ओनली डाउट ना विवेक और समथिंग एल्स वाज देयर काइंडली राइट डाउन So coming on the last chapter, macrolide or erythromycin. Shall I start the last chapter, the protein synthesis inhibitor? Shall I start? We have completed three chapters. Continue your table. We will revise the master table in the end. Let me start the macrolide. Macrolide erythromycin is one of them. Let me start the macrolide erythromycin is one of them. Macrolide are known as macrolide because they have a macro jumbo ring, macro ring, macro ring with abundant of sugars. You can see a big ring. Can you see a big ring with abundant of sugars? That's why known as macrolide. Macrolide मतलब बड़ी macrocyclic lactone ring. So that is the meaning of the macrolide. So draw a macrolide with multiple sugars. So see the structure of all four now. Compare the structure of all four. Tetracycline known as tetracycline because of four ring. Chloramphenicol have a nitro benzene moiety which is causing the antibacterial action. Amino glycosides have amino and sugar which are glycosidically linked. and in erythromycin it is one of the macrolide it is one of the macrolide that's why having a macro lactone ring with sugars so that is about the structure coming on classification so here ha huh, yeah we have classification so in erythromycin five five drugs are there erythromycin roxithromycin clarithromycin azithromycin sp uh, spidamycin so can we make a mnemonic chalo car s e car s e ya e s e s car or you can make some other one so they are five in number so it is spiramycin erythromycin clarithromycin azithromycin roxithromycin so everything is thromycin thromycin except spiramycin give me a thumbs up now it is a sixth one that is tetrolimus is also added here tetrolimus is also added it is not a an antibiotic tetrolimus is a immunosuppressant drug but it is also a macrolide structure wise it is a macrolide structure wise so i am teaching you the classification so set car Set car will be the mnemonic. So tell me the classification of all now. Can you tell me the classification of all? So you can see it is the set car. यहाँ पे तुम लिख सकते हो it is set car. Can we revise the complete classification? Tetracycline, chloramphenicol, amino glycoside, and now I'm teaching you macrolide. Macrolide. Can you tell me only classification portion of all of them? Once for all, एक बार में revise हो जाएगा. Tetracycline divided into three categories. One, two, three. Total seven tetracycline are there. So in category one, we are having tetracycline chlorotetracycline oxytetracycline in category 2 dl in category 3 dm it is demetrocycline lamicycline doxycycline minocycline total 7 are there chloramphenicol no classification very good jab bhi no aata hai to hum khush ho jate hain chalo padhna nahi padega yahan right coming on the third category amino glycoside in amino glycoside we divide into two portions the systemic or parenteral and the topical right the systemic in the systemic or parenteral we are having eight the mnemonic is tangs t a n g double s KP right and in topical NF you know the full form I guess neomycin framycin it is tobramycin amikacin natlimycin this is neo this is natli uh, uh, kya kehte hain ji ko gentamycin uh, gentamycin the two as you know and carnamycin and paramomycin right it is streptomycin and cisamycin carnamycin paramomycin so all are mycin right macrolide i am telling you the mnemonic now in macrolide the mnemonic is set car they are six in number set car can you tell me the full form Can you tell me the full form? It is erythromycin, clarithromycin, azithromycin, roxithromycin. These four are thromycin. One is tetrolimus. One is tetrolimus. And what is S? Only S is there, which is not a mycin. 
throm acid it is pyrrom acid so set car is the mnemonic out of which tetrolimers is a immunosuppressant and rest all are antibiotics yes very good very good you are absolutely right so we have revised the classification we have seen the structure of all four we have revised the classification coming on spectrum i have already taught you spectrum spectrum here i am taking erythromycin as a prototype among all i am taking erythromycin as a prototype but these all are macrolide so this column is for all not only for erythromycin i am taking erythromycin as a prototype so erythromycin is known as erythromycin you know why because it is obtained from streptomycin erythreus so name of the organism is streptomycin erythreus that's why known as erythromycin you can write in the introduction spectrum spectrum except gram negative bacilli it is active against all it is active now compare the spectrum now see zoom it out if you can and see the spectrum can you see the spectrum can you see the spectrum can you help me with the spectrum of the four tetracycline chloramphenicol amino glycoside erythromycin can you help me with the spectrum of all please help me so kishore amar help me here so here it is gram positive cocci gram negative cocci gram positive bacilli gram negative bacilli here also same gram positive cocci gram negative cocci gram positive bacilli gram negative bacilli here only gram negative bacilli so bache hue teen ab yahan aayenge gram positive cocci gram negative cocci gram positive bacilli so except gram negative bacilli everything else is there so compare it now in a comparative manner i cannot simplify more than this everyone give me a thumbs up everyone give me a thumbs up shall i proceed ahead shall i proceed ahead so you can see the spectrum we are done with the spectrum coming on mechanism of action who will tell me mechanism of action of macrolide erythromycin so step number 4 is inhibited here it will act on 50s it will act on 50s and on 50s again like chloramphenicol it will act on 50s and the step number 4 that is translocation of the ribosome by one codon that is a to p shift the last step this one so complete codon cannot sh shift ahead and it is also bacteriostatic at low concentration at high it will be stable but yeah we will consider at bacteriostatic now we will compare the mechanism of all four ones for all right revision bhi hota ja raha hai saath mein so tetracycline chloramphenicol amino glycoside and erythromycin so tell me the mechanism of action of all four first tell me which ribosome which ribosome so this one is 30 this one is 50 this one is also 50 but amino glycoside 30 also 50 also and 30 plus 50 ka junction also the junction of the 30 and 50 so this is the summary give me a thumbs up this is the summary of the ribosome now tell me the number of the step which they are inhibiting tell me the number of the step so amino glycosides inhibit step number 1 that is initiation that is it inhibit p window right uh, step number 2 is inhibited by tetracycline that is it act on a window and new amino acyl trna cannot come on the a window that is step number 2 step number 3 is inhibited by chloramphenicol that is it inhibit p to a shift that is peptide peptide bond formation and shifting of pre existing to new shifting of pre existing translocation of pre existing to new is not possible and step number 4 is inhibited by erythromycin that is a to p shift that is translocation of the complete ribosome by one codon i cannot simplify more than that so see uh, you know the answer uh, window wise also so who is inhibiting p window who is inhibiting a window who is inhibiting p to a who is inhibiting a to p you know the exact step wise also and you know the exact what does the that step mean so that is the mechanism of action the last thing you have to tell me here which is bacteriostatic which is bacteriostatic so i mean all of them are static except amino glycoside which is both cidal also and static also so this one is cidal rest all are static everyone give me a thumbs up everyone absolutely right praveen kumar absolutely right very good so shall i proceed ahead shall i so you have absolutely right you have written the same sequence i have written here so a p to a p a to b but praveen only in that case you don't change the sequence anyone don't change the sequence tca if you have changed this sab kuch gadbad ho jayega andar so don't change the first sequence so we are done with mechanism of action resistance you already know the same three way of resistance i am not saying again you already know the three in decrease in flux increase in flux ribosome protection and enzyme you know the three ways so resistance you already know the three ways i am not revising it's time to come on adverse effect adverse effect of macrolide of erythromycin yeah here I, before adverse effect and uses i will add to, uh, i'd like to add one more column pharmacokinetics now you will ask ma'am pharmacokinetics kahin aur to padhaya nahi aapne isme alag se kyu padha rahe ho kahin aur to aapne nahi bataya pharmacokinetics because kahin aur important nahi tha because mcq do not come on the pharmacokinetics of other but here some points are important that's why i would like to add pharmacokinetics also here so pharmacokinetics of erythromycin the most important point it is acid lavide that's why erythromycin it always come in antry coated tablet have you seen a tablet of erythromycin it is always antry coated what are antry coated tablet 
So this is the mouth, this is the esophagus, this is the stomach and this is the intestine. We know that stomach have acid, HCL, it is acidic medium and we know intestine have alkaline medium. This is having alkaline medium, this is having acidic medium, right? I'm saying the drug is erythromycin. My point is that erythromycin is acid labile, acid degrade the drug. So drug is absorbed from the intestine. Let me draw the blood vessel, this is the blood vessel. So drug will go in the blood vessel. I want the drug to go get absorbed and go in the blood vessel. It will be done from the intestine. So I want erythromycin to reach the intestine. From the intestine, it will be absorbed in the blood vessel. I want that. But beach me the stomach. So as soon as I will take erythromycin tablet, I am the patient, I am taking it with water. So it will go in my stomach. In my stomach, acid will degrade it because it is acid labile. And nothing will reach in the intestine. So no, no absorption. But I do not want that. So what I will do, I will cover the tablet with a coating. This coating is acid resistant coating. So this is known as anteric coating. This coating is acid resistant and it will dissolve in alkaline medium. It is such a coating, right? It is known as anteric coating. So I will, I will cover the drug with such coating. Now the tablet will go in the stomach. So HCL cannot degrade it because it is covered by an acid resistant coating. And once it will reach the intestine, the coating will dissolve and the drug will be absorbed. So this is known as anteric coated tablets. Give me a thumbs up. So all acid labile drugs are given in anteric coated tablet. Erythromycin is one of them. Erythromycin is one of them, right? That is the most important thing. Yeah. And it inhibits the CYP3A4 enzyme. You may be knowing that list of the drugs which causes inhibition of CYP3A4. Erythromycin is one of them. Erythromycin is one of them. Right. Now coming on the adverse effect. Adverse effect means the mnemonic is macro. I'm having the mnemonic macro. What is macro? M is motilin, motilin receptor agonist. You will say, what is this? What does it mean? Motilin receptor is in the body. I will tell you. Don't worry. A is allergy. Allergy to subsidy. Hoti hai. C is cholestasis. Cholestasis is my name. Joined this. Cholestasis. Chole means pigment. Pigment is bilirubin. Stasis is not gaya. So it is obstructive joint. Cholestasis. Right. And RO is reversible autotoxicity. Thankfully, is bar deafness reversible? Hoga. Right. Not like amino glycoside. It is permanent autotoxicity. This one is reversible autotoxicity. Give me a thumbs up. So I will explain you all these. Start with motilin receptor agonist. Now humans have a receptor in the esophagus, stomach and intestine, the name of the receptor is motilin. We all have this receptor, but they are inactive. They are inactive. Once we take the tablet erythromycin, erythromycin is agonist of these receptor. Once these receptors become stimulated, it is agonist, it starts parastolysis. So patients, the persons have parastolysis, sometimes parastolysis it will go in spasm and patient can have spasmodic pain. Spasmodic pain can be a side effect because of this. Give me a thumbs up. So because of the motilin receptor in the GIT, it is an agonist. They will get stimulated. Parastolysis will occur, And sometimes patient can have epigastric pain due to the spasm. Give me a thumbs up. Everyone give me a thumbs up. Allergy, you know allergy. Cholestasis is joined us as I have told you. Especially pregnant female. No Reversible. Autotoxicity is only cochlear. It is not vestibular. Self autotoxicity, hearing impairment. Hoga. And that too reversible. In contrast to amino glycoside in which irreversible vestibule, uh, cochlear damage was there. So these are the adverse effect macro coming on users. So compare the adverse effect of all of them. I will tell you, we will compare them separately adverse effect of users we can do. Then we will compare them. Users is clock, C-L-A-W. C, make it triple C. One, two, three. C, three. Triple three. What is the triple three? C is triple three. One C is chancroid caused by hemophilus decree. It is an STD. Second is cornibacterium caused by diphtheria, right? Third is campylobacter, chancroid, cornibacterium and campylobacter. L is legionella, right? A is atypical pneumonia and W is whooping cup by bordetella. So claw, what is claw? Who will tell me the full form of C, L, A, W, claw? C is triple, C3. So what are the C3? One C is chancroid caused by hemophilus dupree. One is cornibacterium diphtheri. Uh, the third one I forgot, I will check. What was the third one? L is legionella, A is atypical pneumonia, and W is whooping cough. What is the third C? Campylobacter. Yes, Campylobacter. So, C. I am done with the table. Can you see here I have written clock. I am done with the table. My chapter is over. First, I would like to learn some polls on this, and then we will revise the adverse effect and uses of all these and end the session. Would you like to continue with me? Would you like to continue with me? The questions on erythromycin, there are few questions. This is the first question in front of you. Which of the following drug acts on motilin receptor? Can you tell me the name of the drug which is, acti which is acting on the motilin receptor? Please tell me the name of the drug which acts on motilin receptor. I'm asking to you. Yes. 
So answer is A, of course, erythromycin. All, my, all macrolide drugs will do that, but erythromycin is one of them. And because of acting on the motilin receptor, it increases the peristalsis and can cause spasmodic pain. So correct answer here is A. What is the next question? Erythromycin is given in decreased bowel motility. Sometimes we use erythromycin in decreased bowel motility to increase the bowel motility. Uh, why? How does it increase the um, uh, motility, the peristalsis of the GIT? How does? Yes, common sense. It increases bacterial count, it decreases bacterial count, it binds to adenyl cyclase or it binds to motilin receptor. Yes, Kishore, Vivek, Axinutilite, of course, it will bind with the motilin receptor and increases the motility. So, if someone is having constipation, right, that is decreased motility is there or decreased gastric emptying is there, we can use erythromycin as a part of treatment, right. So, it will increase the motility and the constipation or the decreased gastric emptying will become normalized. Yes, you all are right. Sandesh, absolutely right. Priyanka, yes, Sai, absolutely right. So, shall we continue ahead? Only one, two questions were there. Okay. So, master table is ready with you. This was the first master table in the morning I have discussed, I guess. We have already completed this table. Those who have attended my episode 1, they are knowing what I am talking about. We have completed the first chapter, Nucleic Acid Synthesis Inhibitors. We have completed three chapters in the first session, Sulfonamide, Trimethotrim, Quinolone. Those who have missed my this recording, they are doing a big mistake. Please watch the recording. If you have not attended live, it's okay. It is available in the form of the recording. I have given many mnemonics there and the full simplified there, right? So, you that, that was the first master table and this is the second master table we have drawn right now. These are protein synthesis inhibitors. So, this is the master table. In the nucleic acid synthesis inhibitors, I take three chapters, sulfonamide, trimethotrim, quinolones and in the protein synthesis inhibitors, I taught you four chapters. Tetracycline, chloramphenicol, aminoglycoside and erythromycin. So, till now, seven chapters are done. Three plus four, seven are done. Right. So, you want to revise the adverse effect and uses once and then we will end the session. Please help me. So, tetracycline, chloramphenicol, aminoglycoside and the last one is erythromycin. So, tell me, tell me adverse effect of all and tell me, just say the mnemonic. Say the uses of all. Just to fit in your permanent memory. Start with tetracycline. Adverse effect. So, adverse effect LK Adubi is a PT teacher. PT teacher. Right. Tell me the uh, adverse effect of chloramphenicol. It is big, super, you want to write, you can write in your chat. Super hyper, big super hyper. What is the adverse effect of aminoglycoside? It is on, switch on, wala, on HT, right? What is the aminoglycoside? What is the adverse effect of erythromycin? Uh, what is the uh, adverse effect of erythromycin? It is macro. I guess I am right. I guess I am right. Am I right? Would you like to participate in the full forms? Is anyone attending me live? Give me a thumbs up. I can't see your chat. Give me a thumbs up. Come on. Yes. So, can you tell me the full form? Start with tetracycline. If you want to tell me the full form, start with tetracycline. So, liver damage, kidney damage, anti-anabolic effect, diabetes insipidus, vestibular damage, intracranial pressure, phototoxicity, tith and bone chelation, and teratogenicity. Very good. Very good. Absolutely right. Praveen, Priyanka. Yes, Vivek. Good. So, that is the thing. Very good protein. So, um, the chloramphenicol. It is uh, bone marrow suppression. Gray baby syndrome. Very important. Irritative effects. Super infection. Hypersensitivity. We are done with chloramphenicol also. Coming on aminoglycoside. Autotoxic, nephrotoxic, neurotoxic. Three toxicity. Auto, nephro, neuro. Hypersensitivity and teratogenic. So, teratogenic ye bhi tha. Teratogenic ye bhi hai. Give me a thumbs up. Erythromycin, it is motilin receptor agonist, motilin receptor agonist, MA. Yes, MA is motilin receptor agonist, right? C is cholestasis, A is allergy, C is cholestasis and RO is reversible autotoxicity. So, autotoxic ye bhi hai, ye bhi hai, but this one is irreversible, this one is reversible. C, compare them. Can you tell me the full form of the uses also, the mnemonics of the uses also? In the tetracycline, the mnemonic was vacuum, the BR, bad room. In chloramphenicol, what was the mnemonic? I forgot. Can someone help me with the mnemonic of chloramphenicol users? I forgot. Yeah, bear TB. Bear TB. Uh, because it is most of the time it is contraindicated and rarely the use is very restricted. That is bear TB. For aminoglycoside, there was no mnemonic. You have to learn the list as it is. And in erythromycin, the mnemonic was CLAW. C L A W triple C C three L A W. So, I request all the students to say the full form, to write the full form and please write in this comparative manner only and please learn the adverse effect and users, right? Have you enjoyed the session? Have you, have you learned? 
is the portion become this portion become easy for you in a comparative manner i have tried many adverse effect and uses mnemonic was it useful for you kindly give your feedback is it yes so say the full forms i'm not saying the full form part right now but you say it by yourself so thank you very much for being with me and i really enjoyed your company and thank you for giving your precious time to me if you have learned if you have liked this lecture so please don't forget to click on the like button before leaving the session and please share the link with on your batch groups with your friends colleagues seniors juniors all the medicals throughout the globe so that everyone can get benefit of the free knowledge which is which is available here so thank you very much for being with me right here i would like to stop but in the afternoon and evening we have two more sessions continuing antimicrobial drugs before that i am having few announcements about my next session so i would like to take so till now episode 1 is over and episode 2 is over now episode 3 and episode 4 are still remaining right in episode 1 we have co covered three chapters sulfonamide trimethoprim and uh, quinolones that is nucleic acid synthesis inhibitors in episode 2 we covered tetracycline chloramphenicol amino glycoside and erythromycin protein synthesis inhibitor four chapters in episode 3 i will teach you beta lactams don't dare to miss that today only beta lactams i will teach four chapters so i will teach you penicillin the most important then i will teach you penicillin ke baad carbapenem monopenem and cephalosporin so these four chapters are going to be covered in the next session so four chapters will be done and in the end in the fourth session i will cover anti tb and anti malarial drugs there right so aaj itna hi ho payega but episode 3 and 4 today you please uh, stay connected so i'm not very sure about the timings i would like to take a break for at least uh, one and half or two hour in which i will take my lunch i will take the rest and after that i will continue in the afternoon in the afternoon episode 3 and in the evening episode 4 so today anti microbial will, will be done i request all of you to continue my lectures and you please uh, uh, wait on the you, you please uh, um, you know there is a option for waiting now on the youtube link so please do that option you will get a notification when i will start right on the an academy new batches are started for 2023 need pg preparation if you wish you can enroll for these batches uh, there is a batch for the repeater test and discussion batch for the repeaters is available you can participate in that also once you take the subscription iconic prices are rising soon so you should take subscription right now if you are planning it in future the price hike will be there in the next few days on an academy five type of subscriptions are available with us plus you will get only an academy iconic along with an academy preparator is there in light subscription test series is there prof one and rp biochemistry physiology and in upsc upsc preparation in is there right these all are durations with the various plans along with their prices you can see longer the duration cheaper it is longer the duration cheaper it is so go for a longer uh, subscription uh, if you wish and if you are not sure you can take is as small as 3 month subscription if you apply my code on any of these that is my surname s a c h d e v s a c h d e v sachdev 10 is the code that is my surname dr priyanka sachdev sachdev without space 10 you will get straight forward 10% discount on all of these if you apply this before payment so you can utilize that thank you bye bye study hard all the best uh, kishore definitely i will update it on my telegram group thank you bye